I'm your host, Josie Van Dyke, and I'm sitting next to my new gay bestie, Scotty Hatch, everybody. <laughs> the fuck? The fuck? The fuck? <laughs> Um, me and Scotty are just already having the time of our lives. So. I feel like we've been chatting for like 40 minutes before yeah. this even started. Yeah, we're hanging out. We're in our comfy clothes. After this, we're getting dinner and then we're getting 1, high. 1,000%. Absolutely. I was like, if I'm doing one thing on this trip with Scotty, it's I'm going to get oh, high with Scotty. Hatch. I'm so honored to be that a part of that because yeah, no. that's my whole personality. It's going to be so much fun. 100%. You brought some gummies that like kick in and like... 15 minutes oh, or yeah, something like that. They're quick. Which is uncommon. Usually Very. it takes like an hour. Totally. So I'm thrilled. It's so amazing. Lincoln Bio. <laughs> like Bio <laughs> sponsor me. Literally. <laughs> they should. For as much money as I fucking spend. They I'm like, should. come on. Do you have, I guess you don't need a, is it legal in Arizona? Mm-hmm. Thank God. Because in Utah, I have a medical marijuana card. Is it not legal in Utah? No. I mean, that kind of Medical. Medicinal. Okay. Which like, technically I use it for medical reasons. For Like it makes me a better person. It makes takes the anxiety away yes all the yes, anger i had yes, come yes. on which this episode is dropping on a thursday which is usually when i do my solos and i do pop culture tiktok trash and trashers trash but Love. you're gonna join me in Period. all of that i'm so excited but before we even do that we obviously have to dumpster deep dive Period. scotty hatch period so ready. Do you want something really funny about the period thing? Yes. Is you know how everybody put, puts the T under yes, period? Yes, period. For the longest time, I thought people were making spelling errors. And that it was like they meant I to do that. an exclamation point and then they put a T. And then after a couple of people doing it, I was like, oh no, this is the trend. It's like it's period <laughs> with a T. It's like period. <laughs> like I did not catch on for a hot minute. I get that too. I'm like so dumb. I'm so I feel dumb. like I get behind on some trends sometimes, so I get that. I was like, why is everybody putting the T at the end? Like what's going on? And 100%. I get it. So period. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I understand the T at the end, but do you pronounce it? Yeah, like what's the... That's where no, I'm confused. That is that's a very like confusing a thing. Like, should we make the title of this period? I'm so fucking down. Like, that's... Okay, that's kind of... Okay. <laughs> All right, let me dumpster deep dive Scotty Hatch. Period. Are you ready? So ready. Period. Da fuck. Where... <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a tally count of every time we say default because it shot. will be Take a minimum shot. 15 Take a times. Shot. Um, where are you from, Mr. Scotty Hatch? Sorry to interrupt, but today's episode is brought to you by Spearmint Love. You guys know how much I love Spearmint Love and all their fun prints and designs, but this season, Spearmint Love has everything you need to make Christmas extra special with their huge selection of adorable holiday outfits and prints. This year, they introduced not only matching mom and child lounge sets, but also matching mom and mini oversized knit sweaters. <gasps> I could die. So freaking cute, cozy, and oversized. Perfect for chilly days and festive family photos. The lounge sets come in sizes 0 to 3 month to 12 years old for your babies or older siblings. And then for women, the sizes go from extra small to 3XL. So there's something for everyone. Spearmint Love isn't just another baby boutique. It's a trusted name in the baby space, known for its own exclusive collections, which I love, and a huge selection of high-quality baby essentials and holiday outfits. From their headquarters in sunny Arizona, they offer fast shipping to get your Christmas favorites to you on time. Now, we all know it's Christmas season. You're trying to get those matching jammies. You're trying to find out those cute fits. Head on over to spearmintlove.com and use code WEEKLYTRASH for an exclusive 25% off your order. That's right, spearmintlove.com and use code weekly trash for 25% off your order. And thank you, Spearmint Love, for sponsoring today's episode. I was born in California and I okay. was I moved to Arizona super young. So okay. I was raised in Arizona basically. And you have a pretty big family, right? Yes, very big. How many siblings? There is seven of us total. Okay, my I husband boys, comes from seven girls. too. No way. Five boys, two girls. Lucky number seven. Where where are you? Lucky I'm the number youngest, seven? Yeah. The youngest. You're yeah. the baby of seven. Exactly. It's crazy. Wow. So what was that like being the youngest of seven kids? I feel like growing up when you have siblings that are older than you and they have, I feel like, cause I'm always told you were spoiled compared to us. We had yeah. different rules. We had a curfew. We, you get, you know, all these fancy things. Yeah. So I would say yes, to an extent, I was definitely spoiled as the youngest. I feel like I got like my parents at like their chillest state, yeah. but as the youngest, you get the least amount of attention sometimes because Everyone's doing amazing things. I'm just in elementary school. Nothing crazy is happening. Yeah. So I feel like you definitely, as the youngest, there's the pros and cons. Because how old is the oldest? Like, what's the age, biggest age gap? So my oldest sister is 40. And, and I'm 24. You're 24. Yeah. I didn't know you were so young, Scotty. I thought you were like 27. That's kind of hot. Like you, I'm like, do I give mature vibes? You're like mature old soul. <laughs> like 24. That's a compliment. 24. Mm-hmm. Well, that was a good year for me, 24. Really? I'm like so okay, I have a few months left in it, so I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy 24. What? 100%. When's your birthday? April. April. I'm Aries. Aries. 
I'm going to act like I know what Aries are. No, I'm like, so, it's so funny. People are like, what's your sign? I'm like, I'm an Aries, as if I know what the fuck that means. Like, I I've, only know mine. Yeah. Like, I'm Capricorn, so I know Capricorn. Don't even get me started when people are like, my moon rising. I said, I'm out. Like, I know what does what? that mean? No idea. Like, moon rising? Like, how about you just, like, do the one that you exactly. have? Exactly. One of my friends is really into astrology, and she'll, like, read things. And I will say, though, it's fairly accurate. Like, no, what about is. me? I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, wait. Maybe I should be onto this. Like, I was, I just had um, somebody on the podcast, which I won't say who it was yet because I haven't announced it yet. But we were talking about how, like, she believes in God, but she also really believes in astrology because, like... Sometimes people think you can't believe in both. Totally. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, I believe in God, but like astrology is never wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's so crazy. That's honestly kind of badass. How do we even get here? Oh, your birthday. Yes. Your, yes. <laughs> you're the youngest. Your, <laughs> your oldest sister is 40. Yeah. Brother or sister? Did you say sister? sister? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so growing up, all your family was LDS, correct? Yes. Yeah. So you were raised in a LDS home. Very. What was that like? Did you feel like it was very kind came natural to you totally I would feel like just because I was raised in it it was just something that was so like like yeah Mormon obviously yeah I feel like growing up in a school where it was also very much a a very what's the fucking word I'm trying to think the community was the community was very high LDS very 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 Mormon because Gilbert is basically Provo Utah exactly and it's becoming more and more like Provo the day Really? Every day that goes on. It's very, very similar. Interesting. So I would say like, it was just like everybody was Mormon. I felt like any, you know, restaurant, everyone was Mormon, you know, school, Mormon. And then I was in seminary, obviously Mormon. Yeah. So I just felt like Mormon was my full personality trait. Yeah. And Were you a good Mormon? I was a good Mormon up until I was in high school, I would say. Then I was like, I'm kind of done with following rules. I hate when people tell me what to do a lot of the time. So it just got to a point where I was like, okay, yeah, no, I'm going to fuck around and find out. Yeah. So, and I did. So what'd you do? I would definitely get drunk, drunk on a weekly basis. And weekly. uh, Oh yeah. And me and my friends would pop pills in the bathroom. Pills? We're going to the bathroom, popping some Vicodin. Shut (laughs) up, Scotty. Where were you getting that? This is the worst part is like, we had people who were like, oh, I just got my wisdom teeth out. I'm like, we'll buy your Vicodin off of you. (laughs) Shut (laughs) Uh, horrible but it's the truth what like encouraged that behavior was it mostly because people were telling you not to do it or that and I felt like my senior year was when I was really struggling with my sexuality so I was like we're gonna have to suppress this in some way yeah so let's let's figure out something to like take away the pain because you know during the week it's you know you have church on Sunday and then you have activities basically throughout the whole week you have mutual every single day it just felt like I was no matter where I was turning it was like boom guilt boom guilt and every conversation was about marriage and all these things. So I feel like in high school, especially when you're in seminary for yeah. four years. like And you're doing early morning. Not, I, unfortunately, I, I'm very lucky I did not have to. Oh, you didn't have to? Did no. Ar- does Arizona have it in, during the school day? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think everyone does it like during their like lunch period. Like I took oh, wait, my- Oh, really? Yeah. So like I took it at like my fourth period was like my lunch oh. slash seminary. So like oh, everyone okay, would Okay, well, that's nice. Because some states, you have oh, to do it early morning. If there was early morning, I would never have gone. Like- Never. Jail immediate jail because no. I was like there's no way I'm waking up especially for seminary no <laughs> so hard pass I, <laughs> the fuck are you kidding yeah no so I definitely got to a point where I was like I don't want to be in seminary and like this is all like I, it's just too much yeah. and I felt like so much guilt was piling on top that I was like let's figure out ways to just suppress this and do different things and and that was your coping mechanism totally 100% did your family know you were doing that no. anybody I, I portrayed myself on social media, on, you know, at church as this perfect Mormon boy, which overall I was, I was a good kid. Just like I, doing I was a sweet drugs, person. Yeah. I wasn't like stealing or doing you some were, crazy yeah, You shit. were a good person, but you were making bad choices. Exactly. So yeah. I definitely, everyone always saw me as like the sweet little Mormon boy and it was a compliment for a long time. But like when everyone's like, oh, you're such a good kid. You're such a goody two shoe. I'm like, I'm so sick and tired of that fucking title. Yeah. I want to be like, oh, he's cool. So I, it was a because mixture. Because you can't be both. So ba- you no, can't. you can't. <laughs> you, can't. <laughs> you can't be a goody t-shirt like, and cool. I was friends with Jack Mormons is what they called yeah, them. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so cool. You're so we cool. Okay. Weed. So your friends in high school, were they mostly men or women? Oh, all women. Okay. I don't think I ever had a male friendship until like my senior year. All of my friends were girls. And do you think anyone in your family kind of like that triggered an alarm of like, could totally. Scotty be gay? Oh, I was, it was a 
I don't want to say a joke because they weren't being mean. Yeah. It was like an ongoing thing of like, oh, you're going out with your girlfriends. We know you're not going to sleep with them kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. It was like okay. little jabs here and there. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to prove it. Like kind of shit. <laughs> with your dick out. Which I never would. <laughs> um, but I definitely would like have all girlfriends. And even at high school, everyone was like, okay, this bitch is gay. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm going to leave me alone. So you like denied, denied, denied. Denied it till the day. I, I was going to say, I'm going to deny it till the day I die. Because I was like, really? there's. Because I, once I went on my mission, I definitely realized I was like, I want that perfect cookie cutter, cookie cutter Mormon life, yeah. but it's just not going to exist if I'm gay. So like, I will figure out anything I can to figure out how to marry a woman because everyone will be happy. I'll have that perfect life was what yeah. it was honestly growing up. Like this looked like the perfect enjoyment, like being a breadwinner and yeah. driving for kids, fulfilling. having a family. That was like what was fulfilling. And I just like through like gender norms have always been weird to me. Like when people are like, a woman needs to be in the kitchen. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Like I have a lot of amazing, confident career women in my life. Yeah. Since before I came out even, like my sister-in-law has always been a career woman and I've always looked up to her. And I was like, wait, she provides and makes bank. You're not going to devalue like what she does. So yeah. it's like, I've, I've never under really understood those norms, honestly. So I feel like when I was... Going as when I was on my mission specifically too, I was just got to a point where I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. Like I have buried being gay for so long that I'm like, I'm kind of done. I can't do this anymore. Cause when did you know when you were younger that like, not that you were gay, but that something was different. Cause at what age did you even know what gay was? Totally. I, and that's the funny thing is I was being told that I was gay before I knew what it was. Oh yeah, And that's sure. seven, eight, nine years old. Yeah. Like, why is he playing with Barbies? He needs to be outside playing football with the boys. Or why does he want to wear a dress playing dress up? Like, I always was the out kid. And, and it was always my aunts and uncles who were nasty, honestly. My parents, my siblings have always been wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely love and respect all of them. But my extended family, honestly, a lot of them were... Like, when I post anything negative about, like, my family being homophobic, I am referring to those people. Gotcha. They were the ones that always called me out and were like, why aren't you dating a girl yet? And I was like, I don't want to. I'm also 15. Like, like fuck off. Like, I'm barely growing pubic <laughs> hair. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, <laughs> like, so calm down. Yeah. So I just felt like, aunt, like I had a lot of aunts and uncles that were so, like, adamant about talking about it. I'm like, do you have nothing better to do but to talk about my sexuality yeah. as a 15-year-old? Weird. Calm down. So weird. It's giving pedophilia. It is. I'm like, why are these guys, my uncles, yeah. asking me about my dating? Get away. Go yeah, away. like, go. Yeah. But how? when did you know you were gay? I, so it's actually really funny. I had this boy across the street from me when I was growing up that was one of my best friends. And we started hanging out when I was like six, seven, eight years old. So it was like, basically, I noticed that I, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't like, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want him to be my boyfriend. Right. But I was definitely yeah, like, you're six. I like to be around him. I like, yeah. you know, looking at him. He's, you know, when I hang out with his sister, I'm like, sup, bitch. Yeah. But when I'm with him, I'm like, wait, there's like something different. Like, I want to be with you more. Yeah. And then there's as chemistry. I got older and yeah. older and I was playing sports and I was in locker rooms, I was like, okay, there's, there's something that's like different. Like yeah. usually guys are like slapping asses and saying what's up. And I'm like trying to like not look at people to like come off as a weirdo. Yeah. So like, as I got older and older, like in my teens, I was like, holy shit, like this is the case, but this is never going to be a reality. Cause respectfully, I don't think, I think at my high school, there was maybe three people that were gay. Oh yeah. It's there not really com- was not a lot of people. Well, Cause like we said, Gilbert is like a Provo, Utah and totally. Utah. I think it's definitely evolving and changing, but totally. Even in my high school growing up, I think there maybe was one or two gay people. And there might have been more. They just weren't in my close totally. circle. Or out. Or they ha- weren't out yeah, yet. totally. But, like, people that I actually knew, right. there was one or two. And it, and it just wasn't a common thing. And definitely now it's different, which right. is a good thing that people feel like they can be honest about, like, who they Absolutely. are. Which is amazing. But it wasn't like that in oh, high God, school. Oh, God, no. When, even when I was in high school versus when you were – like, that's a totally. four-year difference. And it yeah. still was like that. Oh, yeah. So when you, when you knew like, okay, I'm gay, but I'm not going to live this life. Mm-hmm. What was your plan? Like, how were you going to change that about yourself? About being like straight basically. Yeah. So there was actually so many girls hearts that I broke on my mission that I was seriously writing. And really? I was like, we're going to get married. We're going to have this perfect life. There was one girl specifically. I love her. We're still really close. And I just felt like I led so many people on. Yeah. And, and when I was messaging them, I was like, okay, that's fine. We're bearing that hatchet. They're, you know, good conversation. But in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to actually go through with this. Yeah. But like, I need to have like an escape goat basically. 
And every single week, my mom or my dad would be like, are you talking to any girls? Like, is there anyone that you're talking to? And I would be like, oh my God, yeah, I'm going to marry this girl. Like, it was like the, so many conversations like that, that I'm like, holy shit. And then wow. on my mission, it was during quarantine. So I was inside all oh, day, every went, day. Oh, 20, during 2020. During 2020. What made you want to go on a mission? sobriety and to become straight to be so honest okay i don't think i ever was like i'm gonna serve and give all my everything yeah i did think I, there was a small percent of me that was like my brothers did it they look like they had a great time like yeah. hell yeah let's do this and i remember i got my mission call and it was also exciting and then a few weeks before i left i was like holy shit like i'm not gonna be able to smoke tomorrow or i'm not gonna be able to go hang out with my friends or do this that like it started to sink in and i was like i do not want to go but what are you going to do? Like you're in a yeah. Mormon filled town. Everyone's going to talk about it. Where so were you like, called to serve? Reno, Nevada. Oh, I'm sorry. Spanish speaking. That was the only good part. I was like, <laughs> at least you got I a language said, out no, of it. I said, Hola. If, I if I didn't get a language, I'm not going. <laughs> no, that is like the <laughs> shitty. It is. God worse knew than that you Arizona. really didn't want to be. He was like, mm, go, we said, know. I'm going to test him. Yeah. Let's like, see. We're, we're see. Reno. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Idaho. It's like when people get no, it like, is, no. It was horrible because it's almost worse than Arizona. Same heat. Same heat. And. But there's also snow, which I also hate snow. So, yeah. like, it was just the worst. But you got that Spanish up. speaking. So. And that was the one thing I was like, you know what? Praise I'll Jesus. Take that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank like, you. I will take something out of this 1, experience. Yeah, I was saying that's what I'll take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go out yeah. after being like, freak, I don't want to actually go. But totally. you're out totally. and you're in quarantine, which is already shitty. Mm -hmm. When you were on the mission... When, when you, did you ever get to leave quarantine? Like, did you ever get to actually go knock? Yeah. So I wasn't, I was only in quarantine the last three months of my mission. Okay. So oh, I went out okay. in 2018 Okay. and in 2020, the last three months I was it's inside one. all day. Every so day. when you first got out there, mm -hmm. you're knocking doors, you get your companion. Yep. Do you feel like your companion could maybe feel the gay energy in the room? Oh, totally. <laughs> and he is, my first companion is, was my favorite companion. Really? And it's funny because we talk about it now because he's like, I obviously knew you were gay. Yeah, yeah. And no, my never... husband had a gay companion. And oh, he's really? Like, oh, yeah. We're buddies now. Oh, but totally. like I knew oh, yeah. from the minute. And it's so funny because like I would look back at videos where I'm like, I was so masked on my mission. Look, and I would show them and I was like, oh, my God, I was not masculine <laughs> in the slightest. I thought I was slaying and hiding it so perfectly. <laughs> yeah, no. Not in the slightest. But my first companion, he was amazing. He made me f like that transition was so easy because of him yeah. because the MTC was miserable. I lost like 30 to 40 pounds really? in that six weeks because I wasn't eating. I was so depressed. I was so sad. Were you having withdrawals? And it was also withdrawals. I'm like, I, yeah. haven't, I don't have, I went cold turkey on nicotine on everything. Like I went without anything and it was so hard for me. So I felt like the first few weeks was like basically rehab <laughs> yeah. and on top of like having no family, I can't talk to anybody. And for someone who's a phone addict, going from having Instagram daily to never seeing it for two years, that's a, I'm sorry, that sounds that's a lot privileged of withdrawals. to say, but that is a culture shock. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> and I was in Mexico in the MTC Oh, because yeah, Mexico. Spanish speaking. So like, it was just like, I was in a, almost felt like a jail sale. I was like, I am in prison is yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. And it was so hard for me because I was like, holy shit, this is difficult. So going into the mission field, I was even more terrified because I'm like, now I actually have to do something. During the day, we just sat in classes all day, really, honestly. Yeah. Like you don't really, it's not that hard. It's really easy. So going in the field, I was like, oh God, this is going to be rough. And I think he could tell that like I was struggling a ton and he was very open to me about his mental health struggles. And we honestly were just like best friends and we still are. I think he's wonderful. I Marco, love that. I love you. Marco. We love Polo. Marco. And so he was honestly like my safe space. I felt like throughout a big chunk of my mission, like I emailed him all the time. Even when he went home, I would still email him like, this is super hard. This is hard. And when I came out, he was one of my first companions to reach out and tell me he loved me and that he knew. Yeah. Um, but it was honestly like after that though, I just felt like I had shitty companion, shitty companion, shitty companion. I was like, God, this is hard. And it was like seven, eight months of it. And I was like, I need to go home. Like, yeah. what do I need to do to get sent home? Yeah. And it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get sent home. Yeah. Like you're like, I was masturbating. That's okay. Like, we can get through this. And I'm like, what do I have to do to go? <laughs> like literally. Yeah. I got hit was, by a car. No, You'll be 100%, fine. <laughs> I'm like, I need to get a sickness. I need to yeah. something. And honestly, you probably could have said COVID towards the end. No, I'm like, <laughs> I need to go. Like weird. So I remember like just going to my mission president and being like, I can't do this. Like, this is so hard. Yeah. Like, all my companions are just pissing me off or they're being homophobic yeah. and nasty towards people. Like we were teaching people who were gay and they were like, we would leave and he was like, oh, these people are gross. I'm like, wonderful. Because so, internally you're like. And, I'm, I'm, and out loud, I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, I hate yeah. those. Yeah. I hate the gays. Yeah, those and deep down, gays. 
And deep down, LGBT like, what? I said, oh, the alphabet people. Yeah. I'm like, God, I was. The rainbows. I, <laughs> I was the epitome of what people hate about. Yeah. Um, yeah. The gay. So I was like, I just felt like it was constant like jabs, but no one knew. Yeah. And I forgive them for it because they didn't know. But I was like, I'm struggling with this, this, and this. He goes, well, let's get you in therapy. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't want therapy. I want to go home. Yeah. And we, and there was times where I'm like, okay, you know what? I can do this. I'm, you know, helping like one of my companions. I had a companion that was such a sweetheart, loved him. And he was struggling. So I was like his safe space. So I'm like, okay, maybe I can do this. Time goes on and I had a really few really good companions and it got worse and worse and worse again. And it just felt like it was back and forth, which I feel like a lot of people who served a mission can yeah. understand. Like, Especially if you rotate through companions Oh my God, a lot. yes. I had 13 companions in that, two years. Wow. So it's like, That's you go a through a lot. Yeah. So I definitely had that huge struggle for a lot of it until an amazing experience happened where I kissed someone on my mission. And I was like, this solidified everything. I need to go home now. <laughs> Scotty, what? My first kiss with a man was on my mission. Who is this man? Okay, here's a little backstory. Okay. So a companion of mine that we were together and separated, he was in a area that was far, far away, and we were doing something called Zone Conference, which is when the whole mission meets together. Yeah. And he was far away, and our mission president likes us to drive in the day before if it's a far drive, so you're not driving four hours in the morning to a yeah. meeting. They say, come the night before and stay with missionaries that are close by so that it's a quick drive in the morning and it's safe rather than doing it through the night or early in the morning. Right. So they called us and they were like, hey, can we stay with you guys because you guys are right by the building? And I was like, oh my God, I'm not seeing this guy in forever. I love him. Absolutely. He was out and very proud. Amazing. And I looked up to him so much because I was like, how are you a gay missionary? Like, it just Wait, doesn't so make sense. Wait, so he was like out and proud on a mission? Yeah. Like there was obviously- I didn't even know you, like that was a thing. Oh yeah. Like he was Talk very- Talk about testing yourself. 100%. He was just so proud of him and very confident in himself. Yeah. So I remember him being my safe space also. I came out to him on my mission. I emailed him and I was like, oh, no, I think I might be. And I'm like, yeah, the denial was so real. Yeah. And I remember that night we were so excited. We were hanging out in the kitchen and we were all, you know, being all chatty. And we had a two bedroom apartment. It was actually the bougiest apartment I've ever been in. It was so nice. Nicer than what I've lived in now. Like Slay. bougie, bougie apartment. Yeah. So we had two bedrooms. And so my companion and his companion were also really close. So they were chatting, having a great old time. And we were as well. So it was like a double date. It basically, it was like a double fucking date. <laughs> was like your president, mission president, like concerned about having a gay missionary, like... He always gave the most loving and accepting vibes. Okay. That I just, I don't think so. I okay, feel like cool. he was always so, like anytime I talked to him and I'll get into that part, like he was always just very loving and accepting of everybody. Good. He's such a king. I love him. That's, Still to this that's day, Christ-like love right him. there. And I know a lot of people have hard, hard mission presidents and I was very lucky. I honestly, if I didn't have him, I probably would have gotten home a lot sooner. Yeah. So I remember that night we were hanging out and we were like two little girls, like side by side, like, yeah. tell me everything. Like, how's Sleep everything over. been? Like, <laughs> yeah. I missed you. And we would see each other every few months, like at little events here and there. And we were just like, be so excited to see each other. Events. And events. <laughs> it's meeting, like we're <laughs> Did not mean events. I meant um, active. I don't even know what the hell you would call it. Like, Meetings. Whatever. Firesides. No, basically. Yeah. So I remember we were at my apartment. We were in my room and we had our matches on the floor. That's okay. how like missionaries, I will say missionaries are the gayest people ever. <laughs> even the straight ones. Like, <laughs> The amount of, like, my companions are like, are we going to do a mega bed? Which is when you push your bed together. I was like, no, 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 I want space. And then we're going to do a tickle back train? No, I'm like, literally, I'm like, we're going to scratch each other's backs at night or what? Like, Flip. I, all, and I had companions that would whip open the shower curtain, hop in with me. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, no, that's crazy. Missionaries, it is a gay man's dream, respectfully. Yeah. Like, yeah. I had hot, oops, sorry. I had hot ass companions. Oh, I'm sure. So I was Well, and you up. can't be alone. Mm -mm. Like, you have to be We have together. to always be together. Only time, dream. only time we were separate is when you're in the bathroom or in an interview with the mission president. That's it. So wild. And when you're in the bathroom, you have to both put your phones away. It's horrible. Uh, I'm like, crazy. imagine going poop with no phone. No. It's terrible. It's like the old times. Like oh, you're yeah. like reading the back of shampoo bottles. No. <laughs> I'm like, where's this tissue box? <laughs> like, what is this made so, out of? So, so stupid. <laughs> but we were laying on the ground on our mattresses and my back was to him and we were like, okay, we need to go to bed. We have to wake up early. Yeah. So I turn around and I feel a little tap on my back and I turn around and he grabs my face and kisses me. And we kiss for a while. And I remember at first I was like, what the fuck? Like, no, like this is not okay. And I got so scared. He went into the bathroom and had his little moment. And that next morning was so awkward because I was like, because I have to remember, I was, that was straight Scott, who was a dick, by the way. We did not yeah. like straight Scott. Yeah. There's Scotty and then there's Scott. And Scott yeah. is pre-coming out. He was Scott. a dick. Yeah. 
And he was homophobic. Yeah. And so I remember like that whole morning I was in like full chills all day. I was like, Oh, I'm sure I, everyone knows nobody did, but like, it felt like everyone was looking at me and being like, I know something like so paranoid, like in the Mormon world, like people can be like, I can see like your spirit is dimmed. Yeah. So it's like, I thought everyone was looking at me and I remember being drenched in sweat because I was so concerned. And like, people are going to ask me like, why are you so scared or something? But what, what do you mean? Like get all defensive. So I remember like, it was such an amazing moment because I had full butterflies. I was so, I'd never kissed a guy before. Yeah. I had kissed so many girls previously. I tried to do anything with women. Nothing worked. And, really? Like oh, you never. I tried everything. Literally. Yeah. Nothing worked. Yeah. And. So you're, you're, you're gay. Oh yeah. People are like, maybe you're biased. So honey, no. No, 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 no. I put no, my no. hand on there and I said, why is it wet? Yeah, I don't no. like that. Well, <laughs> it's getting <ta-ta>. soggy. <laughs> And now my, friends, now my friends are like, damn, that's a compliment to you, though. Oh I was gosh, like, you, period. You're like, yeah, I knew what I was doing. God, I'm Did I bad. know what I was doing? <laughs> I'm like, I was just sitting there. <laughs> like, I was just being hot. I wasn't doing Scott's much. Scott's hot. What can we say? I say pre-Scott, man, who yeah. maybe who was masculine. Yeah. But I remember, like, that guilt, and I was like, fuck, like, this is horrible. Because yeah. anytime you have zone conference, you normally have interviews, which is honestly like a temple recommend interview. They yeah. ask all the same questions. Are you worthy? Are you this? That or that interview was so hard because I was like, do I tell him or do I not? Yeah. And I was like, this will eat me alive for months and months and months if I don't say anything. Like, I need to speak up. And I told him, and he said he was quiet. Like he wasn't an immediate. Like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. Or he I'm wouldn't sure, say that. I'm sure he was like processing. Like, how do totally, I go like, about this? This is, and I'm sure he's probably never had something like that yeah. happen before. So I was like, that's that. And he was like, how did that make you feel? And I was like doesn't matter how it made me feel. Send me home. Yeah. Like I made a big mistake. I need to go home. And he was like, well, not necessarily. He was like, we, we obviously like, let's, and then that's when I'm like, president, I'm gay. Yeah. Like I'm, there's, I've tried everything. You can try and tell me that I'm not and that I need to stay on my mission. And he goes, that's not necessarily what I was going to say. He was so, so, so sweet. Like coming out, out loud. Yeah. He was like my first time. Cause my companion, I emailed him. Yeah. That was my first time out loud, out loud that I said, I'm gay. And he handled it so well. Were you emotional? Oh, I was a wreck. And I was so much like, I don't want to be. I still want to go home and marry a girl. And he never was like, good, I'm glad. Yeah. He was always like, okay. Like, he never made me feel like you're a sin. Yeah. And I thank him to this day for that. Like, he is the sweetest man on the planet. So we had ever since then. And that was a few months before I went home. So, like, I didn't have much longer left. Yeah. So when that happened, I was like, that I went home and I was like, that is the biggest weight off of my chest coming out to someone out loud is the craziest thing ever. So that was honestly like, that gave me a little bit of power. And I remember at the end of every mission, you have an exit interview mm-hmm. and that's when they basically say, get married and have kids and do it quick. Yeah. And it, it feels like that. And I remember all my brothers are like, Oh, I was like, what do I expect? Like, I'm about to go home. Like, what do I, what is he going to say? And they'll basically, he's like, you'll tell you, like, were you a good mission? Like, you were a great missionary. You did great at this. Like, they basically, it's, it's a really sweet thing. It's never yeah. like a, you are horrible. It's a very yeah. positive thing. It's like, go out into the world. Totally. You did it. Exactly. And now go uh, replenish the Now earth. go have babies yeah. and get married. Yeah. And I was like, I sat down with him and I was like, okay, you know my situation. Because you stayed out after that. Yep. And I served the, the whole, yeah. whole time. And he was like. And normally these interviews are about 20 minutes, yeah. keep in mind. And cause I would step out when my companion had his at the time, yeah. cause he was also going home. He was in there having a conversation and I stepped out and I was having mine. And he was like, all I'm going to tell you is to go home and be yourself. And I remember I was like, that's it. He was like, that's it. It was a quick two minute meeting. And he said, I love you. I want you to be the best version of yourself. And I want you to be like, be happy. He never once said, I want you to go home and be gay. Yeah. But he did say, I want you to go be home yourself. and be happy. And I think, that many people are like, that's not what he was saying if they want to take it the that route. But I truly felt so much peace and comfort from that. I'm like, holy cow. Like, you gave me the best taste of a like coming out to someone who's extremely religious and then has a very high calling in the church. Yeah. Like, you made this feel like a beautiful experience. Well, because that person holds a lot of power over your So guilt much power. Because they can tell you how to feel, essentially. Totally. And- and he gave you the opportunity to feel good about yourself. Absolutely. And, and not feel so, scared and, and that feel was not shameful. what I was expecting. I was expecting yeah. like, oh my God, you're such a sin. You yeah. need to go home and, and maybe do this. not even that, but totally. like just being like, you know what? You did it. Now you know that you can be straight. Yeah. And maybe not even saying those terms, totally. but the fact that he was so broad in the sense of like, go out there, be yourself. Yeah. 
he knew what he was saying by mm-hmm. saying that. Totally. And that speaks volumes. And so many people are like, would try, would try to interpret my own revelation, which is, I find so funny because I'm like, you can't do that. Yeah. And a lot of the people were like, he said that because he just like, he can't tell you like, he didn't want to be this or that. And I'm like, then if he truly didn't want me to be happy, he wouldn't still message me because he still does. No, yeah. No one knows that. He still messages me on Facebook all the time. How are you? How's, how's life? Are you, you know, are you, what you doing for work? He keeps up on my life. So he cares about me. So don't try and say, oh no, he, he just said that because he has to be nice. I'm like, nope, that's not the case. No. Because a lot of Mission presidents don't have to No, to and do I've that. heard some nasty mission and prison mission president ex- like stories overall. I'm like, oof, I got lucky. You did. Were Very. you still talking to let's call him John Doe, the boy you kissed? Yeah. Were you talking to him at this point? Oh yeah. Did you guys we still talk to this day? Okay. Yeah. When after that happened, because I know you were like, oh, that was bad. It can't happen. Yes. What was that conversation with him? It was over email, unfortunately, because yeah. we were both still in our missions. And he was like, I was like, do we tell our mission person? Like, what do we do? Yeah. And he was like, no, I, 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 I cause he's very much obviously gay. So he's not going to say, yeah. Oh yeah. It's fine. Like, go ahead. Like he was very much like that. Like, no, like we're just two guys. Like it wasn't like a weird thing for me. I'm like, that's a sin. Yeah. I need to confess. Yeah. And he, like a conversation, I was like, I'm so sorry if I made you feel this way. Like, I know we have had amazing conversations. We've talked about it now. Yeah. I'll text him. I'm like, I still can't stop thinking about our kiss. <laughs> like we like, we'll make fun of it all the yeah. time. So I definitely feel like that conversation was over email, but I feel like through the years after, like when I left the church, I was also like, he was my safe space. Or when I came out, I was messaging him on a weekly basis. Like, okay, when you came out, how did they handle this? Yeah. Cause he had family that was also very religious. So we both had the same background. So like, he was like my vice. So I went to him for everything. And I feel like a lot of things like of my behavior, he probably excused. Cause he's like, I get like the position you were yeah. in. Like the anger makes sense. Totally. Yeah. So he was definitely very graceful, but he's still an amazing friend. I love that. I love him. So you come home. What was your game plan on telling your family that you were gay? I genuinely had a plan of staying single my whole life and just being like, I just haven't found the one and was going to live like a good Mormon life. Really? That was my genuine plan. I told my family that I was going to find a girl eventually. Yeah. But I, when I came home, I was like, there is no way that I could live this lifestyle. Yeah. I'll be unhappy. I've been told you'll be unhappy. You won't see success. I'm like, well, then I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And I lied about going to church. I would go sit in the church parking lot so that if my mom checked my location, she'd see I was there. I became such a liar and I hated it, but I had to. And like, I would be hooking up with a guy on Grindr and yeah. my dad calling me. I'm like, my dad knows. He knows. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was living in the constant spirit told fear. Him. Yeah. No, literally. And I was living in constant fear, constant guilt, fight or flight always lying and getting lies mixed up. My mom was like, wait, I thought you were over here. Cause I told my sister, I was at the store and I told my mom, I'm at my brother's house, whatever. So it just became so stressful. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to come out, then I'm going to make sure that I have all my eggs in a basket and I'm set and ready. So that if anything happens with disowning or kicking out, I have all my stuff on my own and I'm safe. But did you ever truly feel like your parents would have disowned you for that? I didn't. I honestly did it, but I, I, I genuinely had no idea what reaction would yeah. have come. I was like, it's either going to be really good or really bad. Yeah. My parents have always, I've never, ever questioned my parents' love. Yeah. I've known that they've loved me no matter what, which was honestly really, really helpful. A few of my siblings, I was definitely more scared of because I'm like, I really love our relationship and I don't want things to change. Yeah. Like I know, like, especially with my brothers, I'm like, I don't want you guys to think I'm like being weird. Like I'm your brother. Like yeah. calm. Like I never wanted that to get in the way. So I remember my parents like, Obviously, like, I put them on a very high pedestal. I feel like, and still to this day, they're some of my best friends, and I love them so much. Like, I cared about their opinion so much. So I don't think it was necessarily fear of, like, oh, you're done. Like, you're out of the house. I don't want to see you ever again. It was more of, like, oh, I don't want to be around you anymore, or you make me uncomfortable, or that's not really what we follow, so we can't be around you. Like, those are honestly the things that were the most fearful. Tiny, tiny percentage of, like, you're done. Like, we're not going to support you in any way was a little bit in the back of my head. So I remember two weeks after my mission, I found my own place. I was doing everything on my own. I got my own car. I got a car paint. Like I was doing everything, working hard so that I had everything all on my own. Everything was in my name. Yeah. And I remember it was the slowest process because I was like, it wasn't until like a year and a half after my mission that I started to finally come out. Because I, I went down to your Instagram, I stalked your foot, and it was Period. the post 2022. Is when I publicly came out. Is when you out. publicly yeah. came out. And I was coming out to people about eight months before that. Okay. Like, and I was like, oh, I honestly got to four. I was like, everyone knows, but I still need to do a post. Like yeah. I had, I was out for so long before I even did a post. Cause I feel like I was constantly getting messages from like my ex, 
uh, companions are like, you married yet? You dating any girls? And I'm like, no. Mm, not even close. Not in the slightest. And I was sick and tired of getting those texts. Like, yeah. why aren't you married yet? Like, you've been home for two years and you're not married. I'm like, first like off, putting it out there. even if I wasn't gay, y'all need to chill. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't even know who you are. Yeah. You're 20. Yeah. And now you're a dad. <laughs> and now you're a father and yeah. married and yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. you need to calm down. Yeah, no. So did you, who did you tell first in your family? So, okay, I have to remember. My brother and his wife, I okay. sent him. So they're, oh, I love them so much. They're still just the best. They have always shown that they love the queer community yes. from the beginning. Like, literally, I've always seen, like, out of all my siblings, I'm like, they just are, like, they're the ones that will post about it. I'm like, they've always shown such ally. Like, yeah, yeah. Ally, or, like they've always been allies, basically. Yeah. And I remember, I was like, okay, if I'm going to come out, I feel like this is an easy one. I know they'll love me no matter what, but it's still, like, this is a good, like... Stepping stone. Stepping stone to get towards my other siblings. And I have all of my screenshots of all my siblings, text messages that I sent them. And basically, I sent them a, pro a big old paragraph, and I was like, I just want to let you know, I'm telling you this over text because I want you to have time to process. Because I honestly didn't know if they were going to be like, because what I feared the most is like facial expressions when I told them if they were going to be like, ugh, or like anything. I was like, I don't want to see that because that's going to yeah. be ingrained in my brain forever. And I don't yeah. want to have that affiliated with that. So it was a little bit selfishness and also a little bit of like fear of like anything happening like I just don't know if I can do this. So, Honestly, I think that was smart. Totally. So a lot of my siblings was over text and I sent them a text and I got the quickest text back from them. And it was both of their texts were just novels and it was the most loving filled text I've ever received. And I go back to it all the time. Just when I'm like having a bad day, I'm like, let me go look at those texts because mm -hmm. it was, you are always welcome in our home. We will never, ever judge you. We will always love you. We can't wait to meet your future boyfriends. Like just so much love. And I was like, Okay, that was actually pretty easy. Yeah. And they were like, we want to get dinner with you tonight. And I was like, perfect. And I went and had dinner with them and I cried with them. I love it was wonderful. And they're like, who are you gonna tell next? And they didn't pressure me, rush me, yeah. but they were out of just curiosity, like, who are you gonna tell next? And I was like, well, let's go to the next one. Yeah. And I started texting my siblings every couple days, like, hey, just so you know, like keep this between us, blah, blah, blah. And I slowly started coming out and telling friends. And it got easier and easier every single time because all of it was positive. Yeah. Like, oh, that's amazing. We're so happy for you. Amazing. And I was like, period, this is easy. Yeah. And I knew that my parents were going to be last because okay. they are the ones that I just feared the most. And nothing fear of like, they're going to beat me up, but just right. like fear of like, I don't know what the response will be. Yeah, and disapproval. Especially my dad. My dad has always been, you know, one of my closest friends. I worked for him when I was 14 to when I went on my mission, like we were always like, he was like, he always called me his buddy and yeah. he still does. I love him. And you just don't want to disappoint your parents. Yeah. So I remember I wrote a letter and I actually just found it a couple of days ago and I read it and it's so sad because it breaks my heart because it was honestly just a lot of lies in it. But yeah. I basically wrote them a letter and I was like telling them like a whole backstory of why I'm so confident and how I've thought about this. I've prayed about it. And this is my answer. Like I know for a fact, like this is the route I'm going and I promise I'll still be a good Mormon boy. Like it was just a lot of like, you know, lies in the way of like, I knew I wasn't going to, but let's lighten this load yeah. of like, I'm gay, but I'm also leaving the church. Like that was just so much for them yeah, in one night. One thing at a time. Totally. So yeah. I was like, let's do this first. And then in a couple of years, it'll slowly, like whatever. And I got to their house and I wrote it in a letter and I was going to put it in their door and leave. I was not, did not want anything. I didn't want to text to seem ingenuine. Like they're my yeah. parents, but I did not want to tell them in person. So I put the door or the letter in the door and I sat there for a little bit and I'm like, God, this is like, just not feel right. So I grabbed the letter and I started knocking and I was like, oh God, why did I do that? Why did I do that? I was so scared. And my mom opens the door and she has no idea what's going on. Right. So she's like, oh, come on in. Like, what's up? Like, chill. And I have my letter in my hand. You have a bomb I, that you're going to drop. Quite literally, I said, you have no idea what's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I sit on the couch and they're watching probably football and my knees bouncing. My hands are drenched in sweat. I'm bright. I'm, I'm probably pale or I don't know yeah. something. I was flushed out Yeah. and I was so, so like, that was probably the most fear I've ever felt in my life. Cause I'm like, this is like about to make or break everything. And so my mom was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, I need to tell you guys something. Um, so I pulled up the letter and I read it to them. Cause I was like, I want my words. You don't want to, I don't want to look at you yeah. because I don't know why I was scared of like a, like a fear, yeah, I don't, the, the facial expression yeah, was so the scary for me. Yeah, it's the facial expressions, yeah. So I open up the letter and I start reading it to them. 
And it's so sad because now you can see like blotches of like ink spread because I was sobbing. It was so hard. And when I said the words, I'm gay, I paused for a little bit and I never once looked up and I kept going, kept going. And it was dead silent. TV was paused. Everything was quiet. And I was like, holy cow, like this is so terrifying. And I finished the letter and I fold it up and I keep it in my lap and I'm looking down. And then I finally look up and I look at my dad first because he was like right in front of me. Yeah. And he's smiling. And I was like, this is good. And he looks at my mom and he goes, well, I can't say we're surprised. And I immediately was like, oh my God. Okay. There's no anger. There's no hate. There's just smile, a big smile on his face. And so we just had a really open conversation. Like, what is your thoughts on the church? And we started talking really open and I'll be so honest. I did tell them like, I'm still going to be a good Mormon boy. And I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing and exploring my sexuality if you will so it was like I just felt like in that moment I was like I wish I was more honest but also like maybe that was the good thing it was too much at at once for you so I remember slowly like you know have you gone to church no okay like it was never I never once and I'm so grateful to this day and this is why I'll never bash or you know talk negative about the church is because my parents have never once pushed that on me no they're Christ-like they're not like you need to be in church you need to repent or like you're doing this ew that's gross like they never once like how was your day today and it was a Sunday. Oh, I went and had lunch with some friends. Oh, so fun. How was it? They've never once made me feel less than. Yeah. So that moment, respect has just always been very much on both sides. And I feel like that's all you need. You don't yeah. really need to comprehend what's going on. You just need compassion. Yeah. So that's something that people always mistake. I'm like, you don't have to understand everything about no. the gay community to be an ally. Yeah. You can just love. It's really easy. That's that's really all you need it to do. It really is all. Because it is especially for people like even me, like growing up in Utah bubble, like totally, I don't have a single trans friend. Yeah. I don't understand it because I don't, I'm not around it, No, but that doesn't mean I can't love someone who's trans, you know? And so I think a lot of times we think, well, if we're not around it, we don't understand it. It's scary. Like, let's just totally, you know, which is a valid feeling because it's totally. human nature to be like, what is this? I That's don't know. That's how I feel know. about other things too. Like there's certain religions that I'm like, what the hell is that? That's like, a cult. And I'm like, exactly. It's a, it's very, very just normal. Just love everyone. Totally. It's really not that hard. And it's so hard. I, what is so hard for me to understand is loving someone is almost fun. Like yeah. going and getting things on Twitter. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy. Like I want her to that know. I love positivity. Her. Totally. And I'm like, but hating, not only does it take a mental toll, you feel gross. You're ruined. It ruins your day. It's like a dark cloud over you. I'm like negative energy. Why are we choosing the hate? No. Choose the love. It's so much easier. So much. And you'll easier. be so. And you're doing so much better to society if you do that rather than hating on people and judging yeah. them so much. Yeah, a thousand percent. So. So it sounds like you had a really good experience good coming experience. out to everyone, which I'm so glad. I was like kind of getting emotional. I don't know if you could tell. I was like, I, I know. I was like, Josie, don't. I was like, I'm cry. not literally gonna cry. <laughs> like, I'm not crying because I just like. I think when you become a parent, you just think about your kid totally being in that situation where they feel like they're going to let you down. Right. And as a parent, you know that you love your kid literally no matter what, exactly. whether you understand it or not. Oh, totally. Like my kid could kill someone. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, I still love you, babe. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I was, I was talking to my friend, Danny. She, when I, there's allies and then there's Danny. Yeah. Danny goes above and beyond. She loves her gays. Yeah. And I was having a conversation with her because she was talking about how she's so excited for her son to be raised with so much gay influence in her life. Cause she goes, not only, not because I want them to influence him to be gay, just so that he knows that it's okay. Yeah. If he is gay in the future, I don't want my son to have to come out. I want him to come to me. And I was so emotional. I was like, I hope you realize and hearing you say it too right now, like that is so healing for a gay person to hear that because your child, I'm sure I never heard that growing up. I was never like, you never heard people be like, Oh, I wouldn't care if my kid's gay. It was never talked about. Yeah. So like hearing younger parents now it's so healing. Cause I'm like, your kids are going to have such a safe space and they're going to be, they're going to take it for granted. And I'm, and it's okay. Let them. A lot less therapy in the future. I unfortunately know people that they tell their parents and they said, I never want to see your face ever again. And I just cannot imagine that. I no, cannot that would, imagine. That would wreck someone. 100%. Like those words coming out of a parent's mouth, the person that you respect and love the most. Totally. To say that to you, that's game over for a lot of people. Oh, totally. And especially given my relationship I have with my parents, we're so close. We've always been close. Like I remember hanging out with my mom from literal kindergarten to high school. Like we would go shopping together. Like we were best friends. We still are. Yeah. So if I was to hear that from them, I think that would have been 
the end all be all. Like I couldn't do that. That's so hard. So hard. So, so I'm glad that was the opposite of what you totally. had to experience. I was very, very lucky in my coming out experience. So you come home, you come out, you're dating. Mm -hmm. Um, what was your plan for career wise? Like, did you go to college? Didn't go to college. And I, I don't think I ever had the desire to. Same. I remember seeing people in college and I'm like, your life looks miserable. Yeah. And you're going in debt. Yeah. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Like, Have unless you're being like a doctor or a lawyer, like, what's going on? That sounds miserable. Yeah. Um, so I remember, so when I was 15, I started my photo business. I was doing okay. weddings, uh, photo and video for weddings. So I always had a camera in my hand when I was like nine years old or it was something when I was young. I yeah. don't remember the exact age, but I was like, I want a camera for Christmas. And my parents got me one. And I would take pictures in the backyard. And then they got me like a bougie camera. And I was like, oh, shit. Game over for you, bitch. Y'all are about to be sick of me. <laughs> yeah. And I remember I booked my first wedding when I was 15 for $400. And I was like, damn, this bitch, you trust me? <laughs> like, okay. Never done this before. And it went somewhat decent. And then I started to like really do shoots week after week. Like all these people would DM me and they're like, I want to do a photo shoot. I'm like, let's do it. And it was all for free. It was all for fun. And then I started getting some bigger shoots and started doing bigger stuff. And I was like, wait, this is really, really fun. Like there's a lot of money in this. Yeah. So in high school, I was like, I'm going to do video production because I've always been obsessed with anything that has a camera. Mm -hmm. I'm involved. I love yeah. it. So I remember doing video production. I did the weekly news every day for school or daily news for school. So fun. I was that bitch. I was I like, good it. morning, everyone. <laughs> Today's You're schedule. You're going to be sick of me. <laughs> So the weather is oh a hundred percent like there's like green screens and I'm like pointing at things and I'm like <laughs> that was me so I remember like that was like we made fun videos we were given prompts like let make a funny movie look like a scary trailer like, yeah. it was always so creative and I always loved getting creative so you uh, know I literally have a tab that says create now like that was like my photo business I'm and so, so I remember like having a camera in my hand for as long as I can remember and when I got home from my mission I was working in construction. <laughs> Probably wouldn't expect that. <laughs> My face wouldn't expect for the to people see... who are just listening, not watching on YouTube. <laughs> it's the way I had a utility belt and I was going to ham. No, like kind of sexy. It was kind of hot. I like, will I say, hope you kept the uniform. I have some pictures of me in construction. I was like, wait, I look, he kind of ate. No, you kind of probably looked like you were like on Magic Mike. Oh, something. I was tan. I was <laughs> skinny because I just got home from my mission. So I was like, that was my prime. Oh, I'm obsessed. And I remember being in construction for so long, being on a roof in the summer. And I'm like, I'm sweating my dick off. Yeah. Why am I doing this? And I remember like having no money. And yeah. I was like, dad, I need your help. And I went into the medical field a little bit, working as a medical assistant. Okay. Nothing was fulfilling me because I was like, I'm not doing anything I like. I'm doing something because it, it paid more. Like I was in construction making 25 bucks an hour. Well, now I'm a medical assistant for $27 an hour. Yeah. Let's take it. Yeah. I was just wanting to make more money. And I remember just being like, God, I wish I could just do this, this, and this. And I was like, at a point where I was like, wait, I can. Mm -hmm. So I literally had no money in my bank account. And I was like, dad, do you have faith in me to do like photo again? And he was like, 100%. He wire transferred cash or money to my account. And he said, go get a camera. Got him a cam or got, went and got a camera. And I literally quit. I ordered my camera on Amazon, quit the next day from my job. Cause I was like, I'm going to fuck shit up. We love a confident. I, team. I struggled for yeah. a little bit. But As you should. It takes time. It takes time. But honestly, like that, those few months of struggling were like my favorite months. Cause I was like, that was when I was like gaining my confidence again. Yeah. I was really starting to like have self, like some self-esteem and I started doing weddings again and it was going so well. And I was shooting almost four to six weddings a month in some months and I was making great money. And I was like, this is wonderful. And to be able to go back to my dad and give him a check of the same amount he lended me. And I said, thank you so much. And a little bit more like you, because you believed in me, like I'm, you know, seeing yeah. a lot of success from it. It was wonderful. And then I met Avery and that's yeah, when my did, life really changed. How did you meet Avery? So I actually met her through a mutual friend, Danny. Okay. Danny had just did her... It was, it was a photo shoot of some kind. I don't remember okay. what it was for specifically. It was such a sexy photo shoot. Okay. And they went and did a photo shoot and had dinner and she texted me and she goes, and I had just met Danny maybe three weeks previous. And to how this. did you meet Danny? Through another friend. Okay. <laughs> friend, a 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 friend. Okay. And uh, Danny, here's a little backstory about Danny. Love her. She's like someone I'm, I'm, I'm it's an, I'm on, like, it's, ugh, not to call that stuttering out the fuck. <laughs> the, the fuck? We are inseparable. We love and it. I'm with her almost every single day. Yeah. We live five minutes apart. So we are literally together. You take together husband to the next daily, level. Daily. 100%. Yeah. Um, so she was like, we just became best, best friends from the very beginning. So when she texts me, she's like, bitch, I just met someone. You have to meet her. 
And I said, bring her over. When was her. this? This was in March of 2023. Okay. And so she came over and Avery, I remember what it was for. I think Avery just got her tits done and they were doing a photo shoot with like flowers, we love new something titties. like that. And she was like, she came over and I was like, oh my God, you were the hottest bitch I've ever met. If you've seen Avery, she is so fucking hot. Like, like you'll see her and you're like, flames. whoa. Yeah. And she was still a nurse and doing content creation like on the side a little bit. And she was basically like introducing herself. And I was like, I'm obsessed with your jewelry. She had like the most beautiful David Yerman necklace. And I was like, this bitch is dripping. So fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Pull up in her nice Denali. I was yeah. like, damn, yeah. that's hot. I love MILFs. I'm really into yeah. MILFs. Yeah. I just, I'm naturally you attracted gravitate to them. I gravitate towards, towards them. Yeah. And so she was like, I just got my tits done. I was like, can I see? Show me her tits the first night. And I said, we're going to be best friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yep. yep. And that was the best night ever. We had so much fun. We hung out for a good amount of time. And I was high, first of all. We loved to Which see is it. even better because she yeah. was like, I'm about to go home and do it myself. Like, yeah. she was literally the best. And she hadn't been doing cheers yet. No. So, so that whole start is another whole other story. Because you are a, the producer of yeah. cheers. Yeah. And so did she come to you with the idea? Did you go come to her? It was kind yourself? of like a conversation she had brought up to me. Like she had basically everything ready to go. Yeah. She's just like, I just don't have to do any of this. Yeah. And we would, she would always talk about it. And it isn't, it wasn't ever like a, oh my God, let's just do it. Like I wasn't like a thing of like, I don't do the podcasts. Yeah. Never done one before. So like, it wasn't like a, let me just do it. Yeah. And we were, I remember talking to her about it and she was like asking me about weddings and stuff. And she was like, oh, so you're like, you're familiar with the camera. And I was like, oh yeah, like I've had a camera in my hand forever. And she was like, I want to start a podcast so bad. Like, this is my idea. And I was like, that's a genius idea. And she started growing a ton on social media. And it was like a topic of conversation, a topic of conversation for a long time. And it was like, we were at dinner and she goes, oh, I just feel like it'd be so fun to talk about this, this, and this. And then it started becoming a little bit more real. And she would ask me questions like, what, you know, mics and cameras and this yeah. and that. And she was like, would you want to produce my podcast? And I was like, I've never done one before. Yeah. And she was like, we'll figure it out. The amount of hours we spent in her casita, like messing, you know. Oh, I know. Messing with mics, looking on Amazon, yep. looking on YouTube videos. Yep. And I was like, I know the basics, but when it comes to like podcasting and like lining up audio with visuals, like it's a lot. It's a lot. So it was a little bit easier because of my, you know, history with cameras. Like it was honestly not crazy, crazy but it's difficult. it's a learning curve. But it was a learning curve for yeah. sure. Lots of phone calls to my other friends of like that are in the industry. And I was like, what do you do about this, this, and this? And it was a long time of like preparation. Yeah. And then she was like, really, she blew up on social media. Yeah. And she was like, I have the time now. I'm not doing anything as a nurse now. Like, yeah. let's do this. So we literally converted the studio. We, she went to, I think it was like living spaces and we ordered a ton of shit yes. and we literally got everything put together and we were like, oh my God, we're doing this. It's happening. And it, it just skyrocketed from there. We have had most the most amazing guests oh, and top charts. I mean, I can't lie and say like I'm not jealous of shit, but like <laughs> <laughs> happy for you. No, it is. It was insane. No, it, when we saw it's charts, insane. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! We've been doing this for four months. Why are no. we like top of comedy? Like this is it's crazy. It's because she's relevant as shit. She's Avery Wood. She's and she's just a boss fucking yeah. bitch. She she has a desire. She wants to do something. She will get it done. Yeah, she'll figure out a way. Yeah. No, I told her, I'm like, next time I'm in town, I'm forcing your no, ass. No, you're, you're like, I'll be at your house. I'm forcing your ass in here. <laughs> All right? All right. No, she, she works her ass off. So, like, everything that she has is so well-deserved. So, you guys have been doing that for how a long? Year. A year. Mm -hmm. Yes, you just, hit, just the hit the year mark. Year. And what's been your favorite opportunity that's come from producing cheers totally oh my god the opportunity is insane yeah the amount of people that have reached out like do this do this and obviously my loyalty will always stand with avery right so it's been flattering because i feel like that's flattering to hear like i would love your help with this project or that project but she is my ride or die when it comes to this so i'm like this podcast is our baby yeah we put all of our time and effort into it and we put so much love and passion so i feel like this is like the first job where i've had an amazing boss yeah. but she's also one of my best friends and we it's like our meetings mm -hmm. aren't meetings like we yeah. meet up and we're like what's up bitch let's talk about this this and this and yeah. we get shit done like yeah. it's not like it's like you're my employee from three to four like we have to be serious like no we actually like enjoy it we right. have so much fun together traveling is a blast like we have so much fun so overall like working for her is something that I never thought was a career honestly I was honestly just gonna do weddings until I got yeah. sick of it and found something else and once I got into producing, I was like, holy cow, like being in charge of this, this, and this, like, I love this responsibility. 
And it's something that I just, it just came so natural in the beginning and it's been so perfect ever since. We never had a big me- like mess up of any kind. We never argue because we yeah. disagree like, on everything. I'm like, what should we do about this? And she goes, we should do this, this, or this. I'm like, perfect. I actually agree. Like we just agree and it just works so well. We have I such good it. boundaries when it comes to like work and friends. Like it works perfect. Which is so important. So important. That was something that we talked about in the very beginning. Like if there is something that is frustrating you, tell me. Today's episode is brought to you by Care Cleaning. Are you tired of spending your weekends scrubbing and dusting instead of enjoying your free time? Well, I have the perfect solution for you. Introducing Care Cleaning, your go-to professional cleaning company, proudly serving Utah County and Salt Lake City for five years. With over 50 dedicated employees, they send specialized teams to ensure that your home is cleaned efficiently and effectively. Their high standards mean there is no corner that is looked over. They treat your space like it's their own. Whether you need a one-time deep clean, recurring services, or even help with moving in or out, they got you covered. But wait, there's more. Want to learn how to clean like a pro? Follow them on Instagram at Care Cleaning, where they share their top cleaning tricks and tips. From the best products for every surface to hacks that save you time, they are here to help elevate your cleaning game. Plus, they offer their very own line of cleaning supplies, so you can keep your home sparkling clean just like they do. For more information about their services, you can email scheduling at carecleaning.com or go to their website at www.carecleaning.com. You can also follow them at carecleaning on Instagram. I've been using care cleaning for over five years and I can honestly say they're the best cleaning service I've used. Love them so much and I am so glad that they are now a sponsor of Weekly Trash. Thanks, care cleaning. Well, because you guys were friends first. Totally. And so you never want to jeopardize a friendship never. over business or money totally. or things like that. And so you have to make clear boundaries of, yeah. okay, we're not going to fight over this and ruin stupid. our friendship totally. over this. Exactly. We're like Carly, who I hired, like she was my film girl before she was my friend. Totally. And so it's like a different dynamic. Whereas yeah. if she would have been my friend first, it's like, you have to have those conversations of, totally. okay, I want, I'm your boss, but like, how do I be your boss when like, you're my friend? Oh yeah. Like, and it's so know? funny. I'll call her and I'm like, I am so sorry. I made a mistake. Cause I titled something wrong, yeah, for example. Yeah. And she was like, what's going on? And I was like this. And she goes, Oh bitch, you scared me. Like it was something scary. And I was yeah, like, was serious. Oh, I thought it was a big deal, but I guess it's not period. Yeah, we love it. So we love it. Yeah. Well, the next thing I want to ask you before we do, um, our pop culture, TikTok trash period. is just how is life overall dating? Like, are you single? What's your type? Do you want a family one day? Love these questions. Yeah. So dating right now is very interesting because I pride myself in my career. Yeah. Like I love to work. And so that has, it's maybe this is toxic, but it's always like my priority. Yeah. Like work once work's done, then I can go have fun. Yeah. So I always will notice myself like, okay, it's been like seven months since I've been on a date because I've been so focused on this project or doing this. I need to start prioritizing things. And then I have people that I date that I'm like, you're the reason that I don't like to date because yep. I, Josie, it's bad here yep. in Arizona. When you go on Grinder, which I know it's an app for hookups, but when you go on that, do they app, not have like just like a normal gay hinge? They do, but they're boring. <laughs> like, like everyone talks about Grinder, but like that's where people go to fuck. Like it's you need a husband. It is all it's for. To be so frank, you don't go on Grinder mean like I'm looking for a good man. No, you don't. You go to find a quick hookup. Wow, we you need to invent an app. Bitch, that's such a good idea. <laughs> like, like, honestly. Like, grinder for marriage. No, I'm like, grinder for eternity. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, uh, as far as the dating scene, I am talking to a few people right now. It's okay. nothing crazy, crazy serious. But it's just hard because there's a lot of men out there who are either liars or yep. they are married and don't want to tell me until after. Married to a woman? Oh, yeah. <gasps> With kids. I'm not joking. That has probably happened over 10 times. What the f- is wrong with these men i will find someone and we'll have a good first time and i'm like wait i actually like you like we should hang out and we'll hang out and then i'll get a text of oh yeah i can't do this anymore my wife's gonna be pissed your wife i'm sorry speechless the fuck it's no it's the fuck times 10 like the amount of rage and then i'm like i'm never dating men ever again i hate men well then it's like well now i feel bad for your wife and i'm like oh be honest with her like Go be gay. Go Exactly. Do you want to know what the worst part is? And Avery and Danny, my two of my best, best friends, have witnessed it. And it's so nice to have them there. I will be in Target with them. We'll be walking around doing a, 
our average daily target yeah. run and I will see someone and I'll like get a red face and I'll turn to them and I'm like, we need to go the other way. And she's like, why? And I was like, that guy right there that I have had sex with countless times is with his wife and their baby is inside their target and their shopping cart. And they're like, no way. The amount of times no. that I want to go up to her and say, your husband is a flaming homosexual and a piece of shit and a piece of shit. You need to leave him. And it's so sad because I'm like, you're not even that cute. Your wife is gorgeous. They always are. You are taking, you are, you're ruining that. No, that it's is, bad. ew, men. Three times at Target. I said, I thought Target was supposed to be a comfort place, but now it's like, God damn, all my hookups are there. No, it's <laughs> like danger, danger 100%. zone. Wow. So dating is hard, especially in Gilbert, Arizona. Yeah. So I definitely hope for the best in the future. Yeah. But right now, I just have so many trust issues. I can imagine that would be rough. Do, do you want a family one day, though? I do. I do think yeah. I want kids because I see how much fun I have with like my nieces and nephews. Yeah. And I see the, the dynamic. And I always want to be that parent that I'm like, I, I wanted this growing up as like, you know, inclusive. We talk about things. And I want that for my kids. So I do think eventually I will be a dad. I just don't think it's going to be in time soon. Yeah. And that's another thing that's also really hard is finding a man that also wants kids. Yeah. It's very common in the gay community that they don't want kids, unfortunately, which to each their own. I get it. In this economy, I get it. Yeah. So I think for me, uh, what I find very attractive is men who are career driven and Family oriented. a man. Yeah. A man. Not a little boy. I love a good man. I love a, a, a thick hairy daddy like, like give me like okay. someone that like you don't think is gay like they own type. a lumber jack you exactly you think that they're you know yeah working at dick sport i don't know yeah they're they're <laughs> a man. sporting good home depot yeah like they're a man they want to back up a boat exactly okay. oh if you can back up a truck if you can parallel park we're having sex <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> immediately okay so i would say the mass more masculine the better i also okay. love a tall tall man because you're pretty tall. I'm six foot. I don't know okay. how that, what that's considered. I would say I that's like tall. It's average. I feel like six everyone's five four. Everyone is five four, and they say they're five nine. Exactly. I'm like <laughs> interested. Oh, and that's the other thing. Don't even get me started on height, because you'll see someone. I'm like, oh, okay, six one. That's hot. I'm like, why am I taller than you? That's crazy. With high heels on. I, I said, take off the stilettos. <laughs> those they're Louboutins five. are giving you five inches, babe. I said they're adorable, but those are not. That's not you. <laughs> <laughs> weird weird yeah all right well I, i'll be on the lookout i mean Please. in utah there's slim pickings yeah unfortunately. but um i do want to see you with a hot man that's oof. i do too do you believe in monogamy yes 100 percent. yeah yeah i feel like it's really common in the gay community to not believe in monogamy and that's the other thing and that's, that's really the hard. family the family dynamic exactly. of not wanting kids and i find that so interesting it's so, and as someone who why. is gay yeah, yeah like why i Genuinely, I think it's because hooking up is so... Because here's the thing. You have to put into perspective a gay person. A gay person is shamed their whole life, and yeah. then they're in their 20s, never have had done anything with anybody because they were so you know, adamant about not hooking up with the opposite gender because they couldn't. So yeah. they never got like the 16-year-olds that were like, oh, yeah, I got to mess around and yeah. finger this girl or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I never had that. So like, you have like that hookup phase when you're in your 20s, and you almost like get a thrill of it. You're like, oh, it's like euphoric yeah because you're like i get to go do whatever i want whenever i want well and also men are usually more horny 100 in general totally so i feel like your hookup culture is uh, that's normally like a high school thing is yeah. like your 20s and 30s okay so these men that are like i've only been hooking up for two years like if we're gonna get together like i want to still do stuff with other people yeah so i feel like that's why because like gotcha. i never had like I wasn't the guy that was like, oh, we're having sex with this girl, like as a yeah. senior. No, I wasn't that person. But you would like to find somebody even now and be monogamous. Totally. With them. And a lot of people that I meet up with, and I'm like, I see something with them. Yeah. The minute they bring up anything outside of our relationship, I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. I'm not gonna ever. There's no questions asked. I would never do anything open. Yeah. I just couldn't. I'm too. I, I, I'm too jealous. I couldn't either. Oh God. Oh I'm like, gosh. I can barely handle you, let alone like, three other people. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? Tag team? No. No. Hundred percent. Okay, well, thanks for letting me like dumpster deep dive. Thank you. You, but now we need to take out trash, which period. Some of the trash that I'm, I'm going to continue asking you questions because Love it's it. so much fun. Um, the trash that I want to take out for this week is just that I'm in Arizona. Yay! But I need to ask you about your nicotine journey because oh you God. posted about that this week. Yes, I'm proud of you. Thank you. It's been so hard. Probably the hardest thing I've ever when, done. 
Because you obviously went clean for your mission. Yeah. And then when did you start back up? About a year and a half ago. Okay. I went to a gas station and I was like, oof, I remember a good burn in the throat from a jewel. Oh, that was the other thing. Like everyone, that was when I was in like junior high, yeah. that's when jewels were like, everybody had a jewel. Oh you look like little I've USBs. never smoked anything in my life. Nothing. We need to change that. I'm like, I, well, I went to New York City and I was, weed's legal there. Yeah. And I was like, babe, like I want to roll a joint and oh, smoke it. But I then we never got the opportunity. Ever. So I've literally <gasps> never smoked anything. And not a jewel, not okay, a vape, then not a hookah. I, not I've a, actually, a hookah sounds kind of fun. Like, just uh, what, it is, cool. what even is hookah? I think it's, is it tobacco? I think it's, to, I know it's tobacco. I just okay. don't know. Well, it's you cannot have thing. any. No, I'm done with that. You're done with that. For good. You're done. But the first time you smoke, I will be with you. Okay. You can be with me. I'll, so, I'll like blow it into your face. You get like second hand. I'm done. So yeah, I got back on the nicotine because I saw it and I was like, I'll just buy one, yeah. fuck around for a little bit and yeah. then throw it away. No, I got back on quick and I was going through those bitches left and right. It was like for every four to five days, I was like, let's go get a new one. Oh, the oh cartridge is empty. Let's go. And it was so bad. Like I was smoking nonstop and I started to notice my throat. Like if you look at videos from me, like two years ago, my voice is very different. There's really? a little bit more of a raspiness to it because I also smoke cigarettes here and okay, there. Okay, okay. Love a good cig. Cigarette. Drunk <laughs> cigarettes? A dream. My husband, he's never smoked a cigarette. At least I don't think so. But he's always like, cigarettes look cool. And I'm They're like, so cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are. And I'm like, you're what? See, he's like, look how cool they look. <laughs> here's the thing, though. You'll see like Michael Buble, who's yeah. a big smoker. Yeah. Or Adele, another big smoker. I'm yes. Like, They're smoking. I'm smoking. And then I see someone like on the street and I'm like, oh, do I look like that? Or do I look like Adele? You're trash. <laughs> so definitely Who is have, that? Yeah. Yeah, no. But I was just, I remember like I tried quitting, I want to say over 10 times. Like actually like I'm done. I'm going to throw these away. Wasted so much money because I would hit a couple times. I'm like, throw it in the water. I'm done. And it was like, oh shit. Oh, I forgot I have Put this it backup rice. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm pretty sure I've learned a trick and we can get, we can re- resuscitate her. Yeah. We can bring her back to oh life. Where's the, balsamic, where's the balsamic rice? Where's the sticky rice? So fucking true. <laughs> Stick it in there. So real. Leave it overnight. hundred percent. And I think I, I, oh, it's so bad. I had a bucket in my room of all of them. And I was like, yeah, this is bad. Yeah. And about two weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I struggled with like my breathing. And I was like, like it was like heavy. And I was like, yeah. Oh God, like that does not feel good. And I started like feeling a little gross. And then I started coughing a little bit and I was like, this just does not feel good. And yeah. I was like, my poor lungs have not had a day off of nicotine in so long. Cause you, you tried to take a break. I would try and it would go like three days yeah. and it was a fail. And I would see someone smoking. And I'm like, Oh my God. And I never understood that. Cause like in high school, I would rip it, rip it, rip it, rip it, go home and be like, totally fine. Yeah. I was like, I thought that's how I was going to be again. And then like, because I'm an adult and I can go get it whenever I want. And it's crazy easily accessible, which is yeah. also like a red flag. I'm like, we need to make it more difficult. Uh, but, but yeah, I there's would, a lot of things we need to make more oh, difficult. 100%. <laughs> I mean, that could be a whole other episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I remember getting to a point where I'm like, okay, I remember there was one day I started coughing and I was like, is that, am I tasting blood? I don't know. So like, I remember being like, this needs to stop Yeah. because you'll, you can ask any of my friends that bitch is in my hand 24 seven and I'm never taking a break. When we go out and go to the mall, I'd be like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom really quick. Or when we're at the restaurant, I'm gonna go in the bathroom really quick. Like I would have to have it every 20 minutes, which is horrible. Horrible. I was a real, 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 real addict and addict and addict rem- in the attic. Attic in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? The fuck? And I remember like seeing videos on social media about doctors being like, if you smoke, this is like the long-term effects. Yeah. And this is why nicotine's the worst. And I was like, okay, this needs to be done. So I remember I've posted on TikTok countless times, like I'm done with nicotine, but this time I think because like my health is like the only thing I'm thinking about really, I'm not really thinking about like, Oh, hope this does well on social media yeah. or whatever. Like I'm actually thinking about myself. Yeah. I was like, we're going to do this for 60 days and let's just see how it goes. And we're on that right now. And it's been, I would say mediocre. What day are you on? I am on 14. Okay. Two weeks, so it's been two weeks and I feel great. I have a lot of people who have been previous smokers that have been like, you need this, this, and this. And it's been honestly really helpful. Do I think about it all the time still? Unfortunately. Yes. But I do feel like every day, like I'm forgetting about it more and more. 
like I don't think about it as much. Yeah. And I feel like that's progress. That's huge. So I have nicotine free vapes. I have gum. I have sour candy always with me so that I, if anything, anytime I'm like, I'm getting that itch. itch. Honestly, edibles have been super, super helpful too, because I just, I'm like, okay, it's four o'clock. I'm done with work for the day. I'm starting to get that itch of like, oh, it's, you know, let's go have a little cigarette. It's been a hard day. Let's yeah. go, you know, let's pop an edible instead. And I get calm. I'm so high. I honestly forget about it. We so love that. it's been so hard, but I've definitely seen the benefits. Like breathing even has been easier or, you know, financially. Oh, I'm sure. That's also been helpful. Like those things are expensive. And I'm I went sure. through those bitches left and right. So I also have, you know, so many people who have seen a ton of success health wise that I also, I've seen like personally. And I'm like, wow, like you're really glowing or like your skin looks good or whatever. So I'm like, I don't, I don't think I will ever regret quitting. So no, I, don't, I think so either. don't think it's worth a little buzz here and there. I don't. So I'm in, I want to get to a point where it's just something that I don't even think about anymore yeah. and just continue on. Cause I want to live a long time and I'm not going to on nicotine. No, you're not. It's I'm horrible. so proud of you. Thank you. That's, that's good trash of the week is Thank you, you quitting nicotine and hopefully for good. We're not going back. No, we're not. We're not. You you got this. Thank you. And you're already glowing. Thank I you. see it Thank in your you. skin. It's I've already noticed. nicotine free pores. 100%. <laughs> they look gorgeous. I said, can you see it on the camera? Like they look amazing, <laughs> you guys. You wish you could see it in person. It's so good. It's so good. I'm so dad. Um, okay, any other trash you need to take out from this week? Anything crazy? My week, honestly, I've just been s- so focused on Arizona. Oh, like, I'm sure. I'm like, okay, I have all these guests. I'm a little s- nervous. Oh, I'm sure. Because three, I've been doing three episodes a day. Which that's crazy to me. Like that's so many. I'm like, I need to prep my brain. That? So my brain is fried. Oh, I'm so sure. that's why I was like, okay, I'm gonna have Scotty on for my supposed to be solo episode because <laughs> Period. I have no brain power to talk about my trash because oh, I don't I'm have sure. any. Like I've literally just been like focused on this. hundred percent. Like I went to my friend's kid's birthday dinner or lunch or whatever. And all the kids were playing and her husband was like, Josie, you're really quiet today. And I was like, yeah, I know. It's because my brain is literally not here. It's like, you said it's off. I'm just thinking about all the other crap I have totally. to do. So I was like, yeah, we're going to dumpster deep drive Scotty. And then I'm going to make him do all this trash with me because I would love to. We love it. I love that. So you want to do some pop culture TikTok trash? So down. Okay. Oh, I love a good First on my one. list is the Mike Tyson <sighs> Paul fight. It was Jake Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I almost said Logan Paul, but it was Jake. I had like a... I have a confession. I actually kind of like Jake Paul. And that's okay. I Did you watch say, his documentary? No, but I saw you post okay. about it and I was like, I want to now because if of If you watch his documentary, I think it'll like soften people's hearts because he just reminds me of like a troubled kid and yeah. you just, I just like want to give him a hug I and know. like he's just acting out and like he hasn't really had like good parental figures in his life totally. and I'm just like... I want to give you a hug. And he's been in the social media world for so long. For so long. He's Him like, and his brother were on Vine. Literally. My they, niece and doesn't even on, know what that is. They've been on YouTube oh, for yeah. years. They have always been on the public And I eye. think like their brains just like maybe are stunted a little bit. Everything's a PR stunt for them. Like everything. Totally. So, but the fight, it was like really hard to watch Mike Tyson. It was so sad. Like I was literally so sad. When he... Avery, I think, reposted a TikTok about it. It was him basically saying, like, I did this to, like, support my family. I said, Mike. No, literally. It's like a sweet little grandpa. I No, ex- he's almost fucking 60. No. Are you I kidding? He, well, because I was posting about how I felt bad for him. And then I had some people in my DMs being like, well, you know that he raped someone in 1992. He went to prison. No way. And I had no idea. So then I look into this and it's like, people have very mixed feelings about Mike Tyson. Like I didn't know, like I just knew that he was a sweet old man. Totally. Like fighting. And I was like, wait, what? So apparently there's a documentary, which we should watch. So down. And it talks about everything. It talks about his life, talks about the rape charges, talks about prison, talks about his daughter who died, like talks about literally everything. Yeah. I feel like there's so much to him and I need to know everything. Totally. But like, let's see that. Go tonight. in the comments. Like, are you Team Mike or not? Because I had no idea about the jail time. Neither did I? I will say I had respect for Jake when he gave a lot of glory to Mike. So much. That was when I was like, okay, I can respect you because if he yeah. was like, fuck off your trash or something like that, I would have been like, you're an idiot. You're trash. Well, he even said he's like, he is the reason why I can be here. Like, totally. He started boxing oh totally like this is his legacy every i don't think you can ask anyone and they won't know who mike tyson is everybody knows everyone knows is. when i think mike tyson do you think of tigers 
I no, I think of him biting the ear off. The fuck? <laughs> Josie, that's like his staple. The fuck? Mike Tyson is known for biting off a guy's ear during a fight. I have no idea what you're talking you're about. You're actually lying. Like, the I fact need that to, no one's okay, told you this, Mike you need Tyson to look this up right bite now. Bite off ear. I'm that's like what he's known for. See, I just he's in he, songs because. Oh of my that. gosh! Oh my gosh! I'm looking at the get. Oh my gosh! <gasps> no, I just know him as like the one knockout punch oh, guy. Oh yeah, and, and then I do and think then the tiger. Tigers. And I think the tiger. about because of the Hangover. Like he was yes. in that Hangover, so I'm like, I do think yes, the Tiger. Like that's so. what I think about. But okay, wow, there's so much lore. Oh yeah, we need to like the Mike Tyson lore is the Mike insane. Mike Tyson lore is deep. It's insane. It's deep. Um, some other things in pop culture TikTok trash was Sabrina Carpenter had Christina Aguilera in LA. Are we joking? Christina Aguilera. I'm a genie so in a bottle, baby. <laughs> Coming on. Careful, Christina. She's coming for your career. <laughs> <laughs> the way. Do you want to know something so goddamn frustrating? Yes. One of my friends texts me the night before. No. And says, and I said, have come? tickets to no. Christina, Sabrina, what was that, Christina Aguilera? <laughs> Sabrina Carpenter. Tickets to Christina Sabrina Aguilera. Carpenter. I couldn't go. And I, what, was Christina coming out? Was that in LA? It was in LA. Okay, so I didn't miss that. But imagine missing Sabrina Carpenter. No, I didn't even know she was in Utah. Because I was so focused on me going to Taylor Swift. Because I flew to Indiana to go see Taylor Swift. And so I, I left on Sunday. Yeah. And Sabrina was on Saturday. And I like didn't know totally. because I was just like in Taylor mode. No, I freaking could have gone. And you know what's even crazier? I've never been to a concert before. <laughs> the fuck? Never have been to a concert. What do you mean? I know. What do you mean you've never been to a, concert, been to a concert before? Concert. Scotty. I know. And it's sickening how many opportunities I've had. And because I've never been, I'm like, eh, that's all right. I'll just go to the next one. No, Scotty. The way that I... Could have gone to Taylor Swift and knowing how I didn't know what her tour was. I had no idea she's gonna perform all her fucking songs. Yeah. No, the Eras gone. tour? No, Scotty, we no. need to get you to a concert ASAP. Take me a concert virginity because yeah, I want to so bad. But no, yeah. like I'm gonna look up like most recent <laughs> concerts in Arizona for you to go to. Like that's insane. Yeah, I think me and Avery are going to see Billie Eilish in December. Okay, well that's that is a priority. You have to in Arizona? Yep. Okay. I think she's coming like December 9th or something. Okay. I don't remember. I'm a bad guy. Imagine my first concert being Billie Eilish, oh. who's my, who's the one person that I'm like, actually, I think I would leave homosexuality for Billie Eilish. Well, she has like more of like a masculine, oh, feminine so energy hot. too. So like, I mean, she could kind of halfway get the job. Too. Oh, hundred percent. All the girls that I dated in yeah. like school, like were so masculine. Yeah. I'm they're like, like I'm sense. lesbian now. No, literally <laughs> one of them is. <laughs> We love to see it. We love to see it. Okay. But no, I was so jealous when I saw that she came out. My jaw dropped. Oh, I know. Like Christina Aguilera hasn't been on tour or no, been in a concert in, in so long. decades. Totally. Decades. And she's so hot. Her and Sabrina Ugh. kind of look alike. Like, I know. Sabrina is kind of like the younger version totally. of Sabrina. Young, or blonde, of hot. Christina. Totally. Sabrina and Christina is like throwing no, that's, that's me off. That's making it really difficult like to say. Like the tongue tied? I, I can't. Okay. The next thing, Megan Fox is pregnant. What's your thoughts on her announcement? Being like bloody covered crazy. In, yeah. They're like so demonic. The, I can't. Like I can only support her for so long. I also <laughs> like didn't know that they were back together. I didn't either until I saw the pregnancy announcement. I was like, wait, whose baby is that? Like, is it your ex's baby? Is it your, like, is there a new man? Like I whose also, baby? I found out a few months ago that she also already has kids. Wait, Scotty, are you serious? Megan Fox has like three kids. Yes. With Brian Green or Brian Kelly Green or something. I had no idea. Which their divorce was toxic as fuck. Oh, really? Fuck. And he's like crazy. But I also think Megan might be a tad bit crazy oh, as well. I, I mean, think everyone has a little bit of crazy. Like, I'm giving everyone her, the benefit of the doubt. But 100%. like, her and MGK together, I'm like, you can't say it's normal. But I will say, if I had to like pick a woman to be lesbian with, it would be Megan Fox. Oh, that's everyone's dream. Which She's version so of Megan Fox? Like, um, 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 Transformers. Um, yes, Transformers. I think I would agree with you on that statement. Transformers. I'd with her. And also, New Girl. <gasps> I forgot you for, she was like, in New she Girl. She was literally on New Girl. Like, how crazy is oh, that? Oh, she was so hot in New Girl. Oh, I can believe I forgot she was on New Girl. And she dated Nick. I like, know, what? which is even better. I love, I love, 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 love. No, Megan Fox is so hot, but she, how old is Megan Fox? I want to say she's like almost 40. No way. And she's pregnant. Let's, let me look up the exact age. There's because no way that she's, I would be so yes. shocked. No, Megan Fox is 38 years old. I'm gagged. But like, think about it. Kim Kardashian is what, like 42? 
which is also crazy. I'm like, God. Kim K age. What are y'all doing? Where's this? 44. No. Kim K is 44. God, good for her. God bless Botox. God right? bless Botox. God Everyone's bless saying that they use surgery. olive oil. No, you use Botox, Honey, bitch. Like, don't lie. Cut the shit. Don't I'm like, lie. The day that the Kardashians are honest about their proce- like procedures and Botox and all that, they're starting to talk about Botox. You but don't like, look like that from real. just Botox. No, life. your waist can't be this small and 100%. your booty be, th- be this big. It's like, just not real. It's called BBL, baby. <laughs> BBL. Which I'm like... Which I want. Like, uh, I want like, BBL. Everyone wants it. Like, they're not going to be mad. Like, be honest. We already know. You're giving unrealistic One, expectations. Oh, so bad. Be real. But yeah, Megan Fox is pregnant. Do we know if it's a boy or a girl? I let don't. Me, let me look. Megan Fox. Also, can we talk about Megan Fox and Jennifer's body? Have you ever seen that? No. We're watching that tonight. Is it on Netflix? I have no idea. Whatever it's on, I will log into it. Jennifer's hey, body is Is it like, like a scary movie? It's like a comedy th- scary because i i think i've i can picture what it looks like we'll watch the trailer and because you some people dressed up as her dress up as yes. that for halloween yes so i like see it but i don't oh, okay I we don't her. know we don't know if it's a boy or a girl okay but i'm like getting boy energy i don't know why how so how many kids does she have? she has, she has three. three and then he has one okay. he has a daughter right that's right so i feel like this is going to be a boy i don't know that's my guess uh Hopefully. speaking of pregnancies my favorite podcast host other than myself um claudia Ostray. <laughs> he's a besides from, me besides me from the toast is pregnant do you listen to the toast i've never heard of the toast do i need to it's pop culture baby pop culture all the way oh period okay then and they're sisters it. they're jewish one lives in new york one lives in florida iconic they zoom together they make it look so good they've been doing it for i want to say Eight years, seven no years. Way. I became a toaster. That's what they call their listeners. I'm. Love. I basically. They need to like send me a check because I should promote weekly trash, and I always promote the toast. <laughs> you said let's I prioritize said, my uh, own business or someone else's or someone else. Like <laughs> join their Patreon. <laughs> like, literally, I joined the trasher, not the trasher, the toaster. Okay. Toaster and trasher. There's a pipeline there. There is. Um, but I became a toaster in 2019. Okay. So they've been doing it for a hot minute. And Claudia is pregnant. She's the one sister that doesn't have any kids. And is she, Claudia blonde? No, she's okay, brunette. She's girl mind. with no job. Have you ever heard of girl with no job? I've heard of that. She has like black, dark hair. She like just recently had a huge body transformation because she went on Ozempic and lost Amazing. like 80 pounds or something. Crazy. But I think a lot of trashers are toasters. So I just wanted to like throw that out there that she's pregnant and we love that for her. Love that. So... And that's kind Obsessed. of all the pop culture TikTok trash that I consumed this week. Amazing. Was there anything in pop culture TikTok that you consumed? Ooh. I feel like all the TikTok trends right now are da fuck. Da fuck. And um, yeah, normal person would have gone. <laughs> normal person would have been over that. <laughs> what, what is the, you know, the sound that I'm thinking of? Yes. And it's like some girl that's super hot. It's so funny because I am on TikTok daily. And why am I drawing blanks right now about what I was no, it's TikTok. like you have to like, it's because we have the attention span of like two seconds. No, I'm like, hmm, let's So it's like, see. let's go to our TikTok pages and see possibly what could be in our trip. <gasps> Shut up. Oh my gosh. I just opened my TikTok. Guess what just showed up? Let me go back. I mean, sure. A normal person probably. Period. Avery, Avery doing that. Sure. A normal person would have gotten over that. Literally the trend that I was just queen, talking that's about. That's queen shit right there. That's queen shit. I love that. Um, should we just move on to trash or trash? So ready. Okay, let's do it. I haven't even looked at any of these, so I'm going in blind. And there's a lot of submissions. So hopefully we get um, Period. a good one. Okay, here we go. My mother-in-law and two sister-in-laws always hang out together and never invite me. I ran into them on multiple occasions when they're out without me. I want to be petty and call them out on it. But anytime I call my mother-in-law out on something, she cries. Send help. Let her cry. 100%. I'm at the point too where I'm like, if they aren't inviting me, they obviously don't want me there. So I'm going to not want to, I don't want to be yeah, with that's you. That's the thing. That's so true. I'm period. Like, if you don't want me there, I don't want to be there. Like, I don't want to have to fight for a relationship with you. If you don't want a relationship with me, see ya. I'm leaving. Like, what's the point? 100%. Like, the, like I don't want to be friends with someone who doesn't want to be friends with me. And, and I don't care if they're blood or not. If they're, well, if you don't want a relationship with me, I'm going to go find people that will want a relationship yes. with me. Yes, love, love. But Ugh. also let her cry. Like, if she totally. wants to cry. My let her cry. <laughs> Cry, Cry, bitch. (laughs) Cry. Um, My child gets copied by all her friends. It has been a constant issue every year for school and is one of her biggest pet peeves. She's 11 and always has friends that will show up the next week at school with the exact same thing that she has. It has affected her friendships. I have a hot take on this. Please. Get over it. Period. Like, literally, like, you sound, sorry, like, crazy. (laughs) Get over it over it like it. maybe teach your child to be flattered 100 percent. be like oh my friends are copying me like 
cool. So you're obsessed with me. Like, totally. Love that. Love that. Like there's enough room at the table for everyone to wear the Absolutely. same shoes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, what are you teaching your child by ruining friendships because they copy 100%, 100%. her? Like, this might be me. Like, I don't know. But, like, get over it. If someone came up to me and said, I bought those shoes because you told me to, I'd be like, that's a slay. Like, Not, you're copying me. Like, bitch, your kid is an influencer. No. <laughs> get them on social. Like, no, I'm just kidding. Link it in the LTK. <laughs> get her that bag. Like, literally get her that bag. Like, start, like, a page. <laughs> Send her friends the all the links. 17-year-old's, like, just, like... LTK like, literally she's 11 <laughs> I'm no she's not oh my she's God. 11 that's thing like 11 years old your friends copy like I actually have a specific memory I was in elementary school there was this girl her name was sailor shout out sailor the coolest name ever like Love. are you kidding Love. if you're listening and she was like the trendsetter like yeah. I would have been the girl that her mom was like these girls are copying her and it's yeah. affecting like because I copied her because she was so cool totally and I remember one day she showed up at school with pink skinny jeans and I was like, I need fucking pink skinny jeans. 100% from Justice. So, so I went to, <laughs> literally Justice, I went to Forever 21. Close. No, perfect. And I found some. And the next day, I was like, I I literally strategically was like, I'm going to wear the pink pants the day after her because I know she won't show up at oh, school yeah. in pink pants two days in a row. Totally. I was wrong. I show up at school in pink pants. Guess who's also wearing pink pants? No. Sailor. So what did I do? I went in the bathroom and cried. <gasps> I went in the bathroom and cried and this was like right before like I had started my period, but I pretended like I had a period and I told my sixth grade teacher that like I had to call my mom because I needed new pants because I started my period. But that teacher knew for sure that I was not on my period because oh, I had no titties and she, was like, <laughs> and she was like, no, you didn't. And like literally like called me out on it and I was like, no, no, no. Like I need to call my mom and was like the biggest bitch. And like Sailor was probably staring at me like this girl is copying me. And it was like the most uncomfortable moment of my life. And I was 12. Yes. And so I feel for these girls that are copying yeah. your daughter because they just want to be cool. Like totally. your daughter's cool. Totally. Let them. Yep. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that serious. Totally. It's not like also it, fuck your teacher. No, literally don't ever fuck question my a girl. Like, like if she's struggling, don't question that. Like just let me call my fucking mom. Hundred percent. And why of course, was that such a hard thing? Like when like you'd ask like your teacher, can I call my mom? They'd be like, uh, well we. Just let, let me call me, my fucking mom. No, back then like I didn't have a cell phone. I should, exactly. Like, I'm like let, let me, me use your mom. phone. No, but my mom was such a homie. She brought me new pants. Oh, what a sweetheart. We she, love her. And she knew. She could tell. She was like, oh, yeah. did Sailor wear the pink pants? <laughs> what a G. And I'm like, yes. She, she did. And she looked cute. Okay. My best friend is treating me like crap ever since she got a boyfriend. Now fiance, they get married at the end of December. She always puts him first, which she should. But even we are hanging out, she will leave to hang out with him and will act like dumb about it and lie about where she is going. She is not your friend. She's not your friend. She's not. And But like also like. She's getting married. She's in a love bubble. Totally. Let her be in a love bubble. Let her be. She's going to be doing her thing. And if she might come back, she might not. And she might not. And that's how you'll know, like if she's your friend or not, if she comes back after great, if not, let her go. I've had that happen before. People and grow, it's like, people move go. on. See ya. She's in a love bubble. Totally. When you're a love bomb like that, like you have, you only, that's your only priority, like, especially in a relationship. She's about to get one. married. Like, but like, she doesn't need to lie about it. No. But like, the person who wrote this in, are you giving her the safe space to feel like she can be honest? Period. Goes, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Totally. So maybe like give her the safe place to be honest and totally. then she won't lie to you. Period. But if you already are giving her that safe place and she's still lying to you, that's like, why are you lying? 100%. But like, let her, let her be in her love bubble. Totally. If she comes back, she comes back. Totally. If she doesn't, it's okay. And if she gets married... And you want to go to the wedding, support her. Don't make it about you. Just go and support her. Support. And show the support. And if she's your real friend, she'll come back and say thank you for being there. Absolutely. Okay. I don't even, like, know what to say. What? Okay. I felt my handsome OB wipe my ass from sharding on the table after birthing <sighs> my first kid. Talk about embarrassing. Okay. <sighs> This is why you never get a handsome OB. You could feel him wipe it. No. I will never experience that. No, no. And I know I will never. Do you think you'll be in the room when Danny gives birth? Danny's pregnant, oh, right? Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. We already have a whole plan. I'm so, like, maybe it. you can wipe her ass when I she... said, Queen, I'll wipe your ass for you. <laughs> like, move over, OB. I said, let the OB. If he's Daddy's hot, got it. I'm like, maybe she wants it. <laughs> I'm like, do you want Kinky. him to see that? <laughs> Kinky. No, like, I've never had a good looking OB ever. I'm and, like, saying. you've never experienced an OB. No. And, like, boys don't have, like, penis doctors. No. So, like, you don't ever have to worry about that. No. Oh, but can you so imagine, sad. like, 
a hot person like touching your privates oh, when they're covered in shit. Oh, if I get a physical shit. and it's a man, I'm going to say I'm going to need someone else. Like I'm going to need someone else for that. That's Ugh. why I have female OBs. But I will say whenever I have a female OB, they like diminish my pain. They're like, it's not that bad. And okay, then like, bitch. and then like the male doctors are like, really like, no, it is bad. But I think it's because they don't understand it. Totally. So they really just like over sympathize with me where the woman's so like, girl, though. it's cramps. And I'm like, bitch, you don't know. I said, don't, don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me. Don't diminish don't. my pain. Are you joking? Just say you're valid. Like say, thank you. <laughs> Let me get you some Midol. Like, come on. Literally what's wrong with you? Okay. Um, I had a friend move to a different state a month after I had a very traumatic miscarriage. I had no emotional bandwidth to process her moving. She barely reached out after moving and now she never talks to me. She still speaks to our mutual friend and it really kind of pisses me off. That would piss me off too. That would piss me off too. And like, did she reach out to you about the miscarriage? The miscarriage. Did she Was know? She comforting? Did she know about the miscarriage? Yeah. Like we said, it goes both ways. Totally. Friend, like she needs to be a good friend. And like you were going through something, you didn't need to reach out to her. She should still reach out to you. But she's not going to be able to read your mind and know what happened if you don't vocalize it. Exactly. It's a hard one. I feel like, like we said before, like they're not your friend. And if they come back, great. And if they don't, it is easier said than done. Oh my God. Like if you don't have a lot of friends, I feel like I'm really lucky. I've never experienced a friend breakup, like ever. Good person. And it's like, I don't even know how to sympathize with someone who loses friends because totally. I, I literally can't relate like wow. that was so pick me <laughs> she goes it's crazy like I have so many friends and they all love me like I've literally <laughs> never lost a friend like I don't know I don't know she how said, to comprehend what relate. you're saying <laughs> oh, uh, but like that I'm sorry no it sucks like that's really that's totally. hard that's hard no I'm sorry oh I'm so I'm dead so sorry okay please help me th- to think of things to do for my boyfriend's birthday. He's turning 24 and he's Period. the best guy on earth. Really want to spoil him and make a fun memory together. <gasps> Cute. Okay. Suck his dick in a car wash. <laughs> Period. That is a man's dream. <laughs> That's cheap, a memory. Cheap, quick, and easy. <laughs> cheap, quick, under two minutes. And like a memory That's all together. He needs. That's literally all he needs. No, I think that's a good one. But like, if you want to do something more fun, go to a concert. Love that. Do something that you haven't done before. Yes. Don't do your basics. Try and do something that you've never done before, whether it's like going to a drive-in movie or yes. going, uh, you know, even if it's like a local staycation, like yeah. do something that you haven't Pay done. Pay for an experience. Love. Like something you can do Absolutely. together. Don't not get a him gift. a gift. Get him something that you guys can be like, oh my God, remember that one time we went and did yes. this? That's what you'll talk about. You're not yes. going to talk about the perfume you got him or whatever. Absolutely. 100% period. <laughs> I said, King just wants head. <laughs> King just wants a blowjob in the car He's wash. not going to care like, about the gift. That's it. Okay. Oh, gosh. Where's this next one? Some of them are like in parts. Okay. Two months into marriage and zero regrets. I'm so in love, but it's definitely a lot of work. Best advice for pushing through. We obviously are making sure to prioritize prioritize communication so we don't need advice on that. It's just hard combining two lives when you are two different people with your own faults. Part two, Where, oh, where's part two? Girl had me, gave me two parts. Oh, oh, here it is. Okay. Plus I'm feeling insecure and not good enough. Mm. Seasonal depression and PP, PMDD. What's PMDD? I've heard that before. Doesn't help with them. What's what P- is PMDD? PMDD? We need a doctor in the room. PMDD. Premenstrual. Oh, oh, so it's not postpartum, it's premenstrual. So like before your period? Is this a dumb question? <laughs> <laughs> You're throwing us off with the PMDD, okay? PMDD. PMDD is premenstrual dysphoric, dysphoric disorder. disorder. Okay, a severe, sometimes disabling extension of premenstrual syndrome. Okay, but what does that mean? Like Symptoms are mood swings, sadness, anger, anxiety. Okay. Okay. Pain areas and breasts. Okay. So it's like, has to do with your cycle. Okay. I'm okay. 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 You yeah. would know more than that. I would know a lot more on that than you, <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> Sorry about that. I said, listen, honey. No, um, just kidding. And I'm married. So I also have more information on 100%. that. Um, I think, well, first, are you di- like, did you go to a doctor to get like medication? Because PMDD still is depression. Like maybe you need something. Totally. Even a gummy. 100%. Something. I think so many people would be so shocked to realize like that would be so helpful. So helpful. I was actually talking about this with someone the other day. Like I used to judge people who would smoke weed and like did edibles. I'm like, you're a pothead. Like you're a loser. And totally. now I'm like, wait, you knew something I didn't. Exactly. Like, you were actually 
happier. Oh, I was an edibles person for so long and I was the same person. I had people smoke and I'm like, oh, that reeks of skunk. Like, and now me, I'm like, like, give me all of it. Like you, you have it figured out a little bit. So 100%. maybe find like a medicine, yeah. whether that's medical marijuana or actual like SSRIs or something that can totally. help you. But with marriage, I feel like sometimes it ebbs and flows. And even in like relationships, whether it's friendships or romantically, there are highs and there are lows and you ride those waves. Totally. And as long as at the end of the day, you are being selfless and you're choosing each other, it's going to work out. You might just be in a little funk right now, but focus on the positive. Always make sure that you communicate with one another, what she says you're doing, but maybe focus more on like the depression side of things. Yeah. Cause that might be what's triggering struggles in the marriage. Totally. Cause you have to love yourself to love someone else. So make sure you're healthy and then your marriage can be healthy. Love that. That's my advice. That was beautiful. <sighs> Amen. Snaps. Okay. One of my friends is not engaged, but has her, has her wedding venue booked and her wedding date set. That's crazy, right? Also, she knows when he will propose. There is just no surprise or excitement in the proposal or anything. IDK seems crazy to me. Well, good thing it's not you. I said, honey, who cares what she's doing? Like, who cares? She's happy. Like some Hopefully. people are type A and they need that. Like hundred percent. I, I didn't have everything planned, but I, I had, I, I had ideas. I was going to say, I feel like some people like a little bit of a heads up and a little bit of scheduling. Yeah. Like just because you don't like that doesn't mean you have to do it. Like what if your nails weren't done and they proposed to you? Like you need a little bit of scheduling. 100%. I feel like back in the day, like everything was a surprise because totally. like whatever. And that's fun too. Totally. But I'm a type A girly. I, I, I need to know. Totally. I need to know the plan. Like what's that sound where it's like, when's the casual flow? What, when's When's the parade starting? What's that? What's that? Uh, do you know the sound I'm talking I don't about? Know which one you're talking about. Where it's like, I'd love to go with the flow, but like, when is the flow starting? Do you know that sound? I don't think so. Wait, are you for real? I need to find the TikTok no, sound you need to find immediately. Something. When does the flow oh, start? Please. Okay, let me find it. Let me find it. Let anyway. me find it. When does the flow start? You really haven't heard this? I don't think so. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Yeah, no, love to go with the flow but like what time does the flow start is you don't know that i think i've heard this love one to go with the flow but like what time does the flow start it's like for people who are type a like i would love to go with the flow but like what time does the flow start totally like, makes total sense you just need to sometimes some you people just like a schedule and some people are super i can't believe you flow. have never heard that, that sound i'm before. surprised too because i'm on tiktok like eight hours a day oh my gosh horrible okay Oh, you wouldn't be able to help with that one because that's breastfeeding. And like, <laughs> I'm like, I have it all. <laughs> You're like, let me tell you how to dry up <laughs> real quick. <laughs> okay. My husband and I haven't really talked in two weeks. We don't even fight anymore. We just give each other the silent treatment. It feels like we are falling out of love. We've been married for six years and have three young kids. Advice. Sad. That's so sad. Two weeks? Two, like silence treatment for two weeks? Sounds like you guys need therapy. Sound, I was going to say therapy is definitely something, but what's the problem? Is there like something specific? Yeah, like I wonder what the root cause of it is. Totally. If it's something that's really big and he cheated, leave his ass. Yeah. But if it's something that like you guys can both work through, definitely get some therapy in. Because it sounds like that's so sad. you both have kind of just like given up a little. And yeah. like marriage is work, but like marriage shouldn't be hard. Like, I feel like it should be hard. Like life is hard. Yes. And so you need to find someone you can do Life, life, together. life with yeah. and so maybe something happened that made like like your marriage hard totally. and you guys need to work through that and like honestly therapy I think having even if you don't want to go to like an actual therapist even if you just like use like uh what's that um there's like an app where you can like have a mediator oh no way yeah like some like a like chat gbt type style where they like <gasps> listen in yes. to things and they can like give work. inside yes yes I know because, exactly what you're talking about because now. you need a third party sometimes. Totally. Somebody who is not biased. Exactly. Who can like really read the room, look at both sides of the story and just give you honest feedback. Totally. And if you can't afford a therapist, maybe look into this. I'm trying to, I'll have to figure out what the app is called. It's something. Headspace or I don't know. I know, know exactly what you're talking about, which I discovered this like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And, like, it's so interesting. You can have a whole ass conversation. Exactly. Because like some people can't afford therapy. Oh, therapy a lot of time isn't covered by insurance and it's really so expensive. expensive. Totally. And so find somebody who can like be the third party, talk to you guys. Absolutely. And really help you work through it because you have three kids and like. I know. That would be. That's hard. Like that's divorce so is a scary thing, but also divorce can also be a good thing. Totally. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Absolutely. But. Try therapy. Oh, okay. Thing. We'll do one more. Period. 
I bought a house in a nicer area, 20 minutes away from my family and friends. And now it feels like they are icing me out. No one else, nothing else has changed. Should I try to just make new friends? Yes. We're like- 1000%. I think we're on this trend of like, if people are not filling your cup and you're not, they're not wanting you around, that's great. Leave. Like, bye. Absolutely. I would say goodbye. If my friends, if I had to beg my friends to hang out with them, I'd be like, what am I doing? I'd be like, fuck off. I'm done. Like, I'm so done. It really has to go both ways. Yeah. Like, you can't just give, give, give all the time. Totally. And it sounds like you got a new house. You got a new space. Throw a party Enjoy and it. don't Throw invite them. Exactly. <laughs> invite us. We'll come. We'll come. Invite <laughs> us. Literally. Okay. Last one. My ex-boyfriend of over a year, his friend's girlfriend, asked me to go to dinner with them. I haven't seen them in over eight months, and I'm not friends with them. Is it weird? Do I go? Okay, wait. My ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend's... Friends. Girlfriends. Okay, so your ex-boyfriend's friend's girlfriend. So, like, my... So, it'd be, like, my husband's friend's Better wife's. girls. Okay, yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah, okay. makes sense. I haven't seen them in over eight months. I'm not friends with them. Is it weird that I go? Yeah, go and get the tea. 100%. <laughs> like, are you joking? Go figure out some like, juicy, juicy goss. Like, what's what's he doing now? Totally. Like, do you, unless you, like, are so over it and, like, you don't even want to, like, be in the same presence of, of their name. But, but if like, you're interested, go. Like, go. A fun little girls night. Absolutely. Get the juice. Figure out what's happening. Get Absolutely. some food. Hang out. Totally. Go. I say go. That's our that's our and report advice. back. Go report back. We're gonna go get dinner now. Hundred percent. Where are we going? Okay, there's a couple places I want to recommend. There's okay. this place called San it's Diego Talk Diego Tacos. Somebody recommended that in my thing. Diego Tacos. It's so okay. good. Okay. Oh my god. Either that or we could. I, I'm trying to do something that you don't have in Utah. Yes. Do you have Postino? No. What's that? Do you like? Well, I mean, this is kind of like a skinny girl dinner. But they're like charcuteries. No, bitch. We're not having charcuterie. Okay, no, like, but they're literally good. fuck off. They're like, no. bomb. Okay, they also have pasta. But charcuterie another... for dinner? <laughs> Are you kidding? Thank God you're on Are you on Ozempic? Like, what's happening? <laughs> I said, okay, no. so you're a good one. Yeah, no, no, We're no, going to no. go get a juicy, greasy burger. I, like, I need to eat, okay? I, I need, need to eat calories okay so we're definitely not getting charcuterie um <laughs> but thanks so much for letting me thank dumpster you. deep debut uh, and thank thanks for so taking much. out trash with me so i didn't have Anytime. to do it by myself because like i do not have the brain Queen, power I to do I that you. i don't blame you um i love you guys have the best weekend ever the next guest will be announced on sunday so <sighs> get ready i love you all and scotty i love you love you thank you don't forget to take out your trash bye